Okay. Well then, let's ping 2,000 people. Almost 3,000, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I love how well Discord uh, crops that embed photo. It's <laughs> it's just the best. Normal YouTube thumbnail size, it can't embed it. It's impossible to embed. So, to the guy in chat, the lasers aren't supposed to hurt the player. I will go I'll talk about it in a minute when we get to a laser intro. Hey, all. There they come. <laughs> so this is I'm here joined with Monty. Ah. Tell me if the vo if the volume is good. I try to put the game very low because I want to hear myself talk. Fifty six viewers. <laughs> <laughs> um well we released Port Revolution. I don't think you guys have heard my voice in public channels since uh <laughs> last time when we played Minecraft. <laughs> How are we feeling about this mod day? Well, it's been, it's been a ride, I'd say that. <laughs> oh. It's been uh, yeah. days of just dressing about there. Yeah, for anyone, this is obviously going to have spoilers. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> We're gonna talk about stuff. Um, we do plan to do a proper developer, like a proper in-game developer commentary. Um, but that's still gonna take a while. Somebody fought him as a Minecraft. Oh, that's uh, Strizzler. <laughs> hey. Um, we're oh, gonna. Know, we're gonna. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other username. We are gonna do a proper in-game developer commentary where we go, you know, talk about the stuff, and you can play it at your own pace. Um, but it's still gonna take a while. So just to. Um, bridge the gap, sort of, or to just talk in a more casual style. Um, yeah, we, we, um, we wanted to live stream this, we already can just talk about things. Cut content stuff. I'm confused about that. Could people download those betas? Because those... Um... Yeah, they did it They did it through the, the Steam CMD thing, where you can just download the depot. That's stupid. <laughs> I have no idea did Because I disabled those uh, betas entirely. Um, I thought you couldn't even any, even get those. I mean, there's nothing... I didn't want to show those. There's nothing in that is super problematic. Just know, guys, that... Yeah, it has been a long ride. Um, so, well, let's start... Before we start with the game, the menu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always so fun. Um, I there was a comment that I read today um, on the release video. I think a guy said this this uh, this doesn't look like an eight year project. This looks like a six month project to me. <laughs> oh God, yeah, that one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the thing you have to deal with as a software developer, and especially as a game developer, is the general public is so misinformed and has absolutely no idea how much effort goes into these games. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a bit annoying. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's just one of those things, I guess. Yeah. It doesn't affect me too much, but I'm I'm just always baffled by the stupidity of some of these comments um yeah i mean look i've I, i've gotten so many comments already i'm not i'm not struggling with like dealing with it though but still once you make something and you get so much attention and everyone talks about it and you read through the stuff and then even if it's just a small amount of nasty stuff even though you know you shouldn't listen to them a small part of you, it still it still gets to you. But um, I'm happy with the product we released. I think it's I think uh, we did a. I'm so proud of our team. We did a fantastic job. Everyone on the team really pulled their weight. Um, and I'm glad that you all are exciting, uh, you know, enjoying it. 
uh, authoring tools. Uh, we have no no timeline for that right now because um, bugs. <laughs> yeah, there are some Strata source engine bugs still in there, and um, I don't want to you know say a dead say a day now and then we we'll miss it and people complain. Um, right now, I just mainly want to fix all of these weird issues people are having, like portal guns disappearing, and I'll, I will talk about those bugs because I feel like that is something that really weighed down the game for a lot of people. Main complaints I heard was localization. Um, in that case, that's just that's a complicated issue. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll have more localizations in the game later. Um, we just couldn't really ship with uh, all of them at the beginning because yeah, we still made changes right towards the end. Yeah, we also couldn't curate everyone because, you know, risk um, leaking everything. Yeah, that's also a problem. Uh, I've had a lot of nasty experiences in the portal modding community and like you know the problem of leaking things is always an issue if you work on something for as long as uh we have and especially i have you don't want to just send your internet your your game to some random guy or girl on the internet who you don't know so they can translate to another language um yeah, so I just we, so we just have German and English because I could write those myself. Another thing, also, things like UI translation. Uh, we were tweaking UI right to the end. Things like this, uh, like this new game menu. I I updated that. <laughs> I remade that whole thing, <laughs> like the day before we released. <laughs> I'm glad that there were no real bugs in here. That's 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 nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Austria. So yeah, let's talk about the actual game. Um, the menu, you know, people just glance over the stuff, but this menu took months and months of work to make. And another thing, oh, this is still, that's fun. <laughs> it's got the wrong hover. It shouldn't hover here. Oh God. Yeah, we had that for a while. We had it for a long time. That's because uh, other tabs like these have hover, and this is the oh, same God, style. Yeah. Um, right, so, yeah, so these yeah. all do the same because I can't select I don't know what this is I could look into it oh look at that custom map custom map no way yeah these are probably screenshots that I downloaded from other people and it didn't give me the TGA so that's, so that's, so that's fine um yeah yeah I mean people glance over this over stuff like this but this took a lot of work to, 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 to do and if I also got a re um, another thing is, you know, uh, this is this is a thing where people under people like are all surprised about how small our team is because uh, I made the whole UI <laughs> myself, um, made most of all of the level design, decorated most of the environments. This envi this vista here, for example, was started by me. Monty then at, um, did the further bit further back stuff. And fix yeah, up, fix up. Was, I do, I worked on the daytime version of that for like a while, yeah. throughout the entire development, even right to the end. You were always tweaking, adding it, it things. Never I was never pleased with it. It was, it was like one of the only maps I think where I had full one hundred percent, like, uh, done. No one else really touched it. So uh, why is the sun that helped. huge? Because it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it, this is just sort of bloom, right? The sun is always really small, but if you look at it, it's it, it it's just blooming so big that it looks larger. I mean, yeah, if you go outside and look at the sun, mm -hmm. it's a uh, ginormous. And it also depends on what exposure you have. Yeah. If you if you expose if your exposure is really low, like if you if you have your eyes really open, if your iris is open, then it looks really, if a lot more light gets in and stuff like that. Yeah, if we, we exposed for the sun, it would be like way too dark. Yeah, then everything would be really dark. <clears throat> um, not good. Another thing here is that, um, 
yeah, in the UI, getting this to work with controller and mouse at the same time was an absolute nightmare. The amount of reiteration I had to do to get this to work because I wanted this menu to not change, to not shuffle around, not have any special cases, but to be intuitive and usable on both a pointer device and I call it directional controls. So you can use your Steam controller, which I have here, or any other type of controller, and move around like this. And I even show little glyphs down at the bottom for what is currently being used. Um, oops. Yeah. Um, and then it should also work with the mouse point. And you and this sounds this is, sounds much much easier than you think until you actually try it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this this took a lot of work, um, and uh, because I had a lot of like, at first I designed it for the mouse, but then you had to like constantly navigate around with the with the directional controls, which was really annoying. I call it directional because it also works with keyboard, and you can even use WSD and spacebar to navigate this, which I think is really cool. You can just you know only use the left hand. That's a pretty cool panorama feature. I had to do so many code fixes to get the stuff to work <sighs> because uh, CSGO's uh, panorama is not made for directional controls, right? No. It's, um, it's Cisco, you can only use it with a pointer device, only with a mouse. So if you try um, holding tab, you can also press tab, um, but uh, the, the directional controls are much better. <laughs> yeah, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, Cisco was not made for that. So it, it, it there are tools to get this stuff to work are pretty limited. They do exist at some point at least. Um, but there was a lot of tweaking I had to do. Um, yeah, especially to detect whether or not you're using a controller at, this, at the moment and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess I will just start because I'm probably boring people just talking about UI. But but, but I, w I wanted to put this at the start because I just want to highlight um, right off the bat, how many things there are that, um, you know, most people glance over, so I just want to, um, but yeah, people really seem to like the UI. I've, I've not seen any complaints about the UI, people really love it. And it's obviously inspired by, because, I, and I, I'm really glad because I struggled so much with that. <laughs> My God, getting this to look good, it, it looked yeah. like a it looked like a Unity default project for a long time. Maybe I can even. <laughs> there any old screenshots? Yeah, yeah, I could go from my screenshots. I've got all screenshots dating back since twenty sixteen. Oh god. Oh yeah, this yeah, is to... this is what the load game UI looked like the day before release. Basically, I found it and now lost it. There, this is what this UI looked like before release. So like I. Yeah, this worked semi okay on a on a on a mouse because you could you, you could just click on the stuff and this is you know this is faster to select individual maps if you need them to. Basically, you have play from beginning, which just starts the first map, and then you can select individual maps. I wanted to have that. Um, uh, yeah, I wanted to have this stuff, and th and this is very fast. And Monty was originally complaining about the new UI here, but the issue I had with this is that. Um, these these t numbers here are different numbers to those in the achievements, right? So if the achievement says, oh, you know, do this thing in four eleven, then people go four and don't find eleven because these aren't chapter like like chamber numbers; they're map numbers. Map numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And if we wanted to display more information, this UI would be really cluttered and very text based, and I didn't want that. I found this whole thing to be a bit cluttered in general already. Yeah, so, there's no way to preview the maps either. Like yeah, an image. I also nice. removed this button. <laughs> the button worked, it, there was just no commentary. <laughs> so yeah, that's what the space is here. Um, and then I added the box here, which only gets unlocked once you've completed the chapter and stuff like that. Yeah, this, this took a lot of work. Um, another iteration was this, where we had everything on one screen. And this looks cool at, at first, right? It, it's like a lot of pictures, but oh, yeah. I, it's also very cluttered. And um, it didn't feel great with uh, with navigational controls, directional controls. 
And I also had trouble hi like h differentiating between the selected item that you're currently like focusing on and the active chapter. Um, that was always difficult, so I just try to minimize how much like of this we have. Yeah, this. Uh, I like the text that we have on the right here, but we sort of got the same thing now. Um, I think about updating it to add some other descriptions here. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much I want to still update this stuff. Uh, and and I see nobody complain about this, so it's got a very low priority if I do. Yeah. The fact that it's functional is uh, yeah. without any bugs. Well, Another thing we, we, we did for the menu is um, we, like, in Portal 2, you have background videos in the menu. Whereas we, I found it easier to have background maps um, because then they can be interactive and they're just sort of more diegetic, right? Um, if you don't know, this is actually shade. This is dependent up on SV unlock chapters. A lot of people complete the game in one sitting and never see the other background uh, maps. Yeah. Um, but if I set this to free and reopen the game. Then this is another background map, right? Those were mainly done by uh, Mystical Ace. Yeah, pretty all of them. Yeah, I did pretty much all of them. Obviously, just took the existing maps, but then stripped the hell out of it. Um, like there's so much, you know, you you want these background maps to be to load fast. Um, so we strip out as much stuff as possible that you can't see to make them load as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, let's start with, oh yeah, you can also, in the menu, do this. I added this for people that play on Steam Deck or just general with controllers, where you don't have a keyboard, just to have this. I may, may, we should have maybe disabled this menu at launch, because some players immediately unlocked everything, went to the end, and ruined yeah. the fun. I mean, it's their fault, honestly, in my mind, it's, yeah. If, the, if they ruin the fun. The loading screen took also some time, and I have... But I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this looks now. Very sort of semi diegetic mm. style, so it's very nice. Yeah, I'm gonna pause here. To <laughs> you guys will be surprised how much we have to say about everything. <laughs> I can also stream this for you, Monty, unless my PC dies because of that. Uh, that's what, yeah, the stream's a little bit behind. Yeah, but I'm just I'm just looking at this. Um, yeah, this is this is really interesting. Um, I wanted to have the player like start as a test subject and you see how you get delivered to the like testing track. Of course, it's spoilers. Um, very much inspired by other portal mods like um i think portal pro did that you have a or or also preload um a lot of inspiration from portal one mods here definitely um where you would see yourself getting delivered to the test chamber and this i, I wanted to sort of explore the i wanted to explore the like the stasis chambers from Portal 2 in an undestroyed style, um, but do a different take than what Average Attack did. Because in in there you have this like lobby that's all made of like this plaster walls and stuff. Um, and I took it in a different way. So this intro sequence is just to sort of show you that the, the state of the enrichment center, you've got some chairs in the tube. Um, yeah. This free cam here, um, normally in so like you're in a point view control right now, and in Source Engine, when you're in a point view control, you can't move the camera. Um, so Rory programmed this um, smooth, this free look uh, system into the point view control entity for us, um, which is really nice. Very cool. I later found out that you can actually use vehicles to do a similar thing where you can look around, yeah. but in a, in, a, in, a, in a clamped way. Uh, but I still prefer what we did, uh, because Definitely. in 
with the vehicles, you don't have this moving effect. Um, Both the edges. Yeah, whereas this is a very nice smooth camera, which also feels like you know you've just woken up. Try to make the environment here as like dim as possible with the pretty texture. Fun fact: this is actually a, a world portal in the ceiling here. It's a moving world portal, which they only added in Portal Two for that one neurotoxin map. Um, um, yeah, so the logic behind that is pretty jank. Everything breaks. Like, yeah, physics is completely broken. So I had to be very clever because I pretty much I I make sure that the player can only get out of bed after the after the camera has, after the portal has stopped moving. Um, yeah, this uh, this you know you you might think that the room is actually moving through this, but the problem is that it's an, a, a nightmare with uh, like lighting and everything. Okay. It's much easier to keep the playable space stationary and, it, and to just fake the vista outside. So this means that there's a the texture <laughs> that's like behind the portal here that's like pretending to be this lamp, yeah. and it's moving. <laughs> It's moving on like track trains that are perfectly synced up to get the shadows to look right. Yeah. <laughs> that took a, a bit of time to get that right. We've had this intro for like a while though, I swear. Yeah, it's existed for a while, but, uh, but I've, I've kept tweaking and tweaking it. At first you would just wake up here and the ceiling would be uh, clean. So you would just wake up in the already lit room. I think that was maybe right. before you joined. No, that should... That should Maybe. I think it was dark when I, I can't remember a long time ago. Uh, yeah, it, it might be. Uh, in my head, the timeline is very, you know, not all over the place. But yeah, I added that to sort of have a little bit of a pre-intro so you can see um, how you're getting delivered. Will! <laughs> the voice actor for Sterling. My goodness, that's gonna be a discussion. <laughs> Some people don't like him, a lot of people really love him. We definitely really, really love him. Um, Voice, voices are always polarizing. Yeah. Um, the thing with that is, I mean, you know, maybe because other mods, I, I, didn't, I didn't work, I didn't release those, I don't know how, what comments they got, right? Um, so maybe it's always the case that people just, you know, don't like certain voice actors or whatever. I feel like I can understand that people have a hard time getting used to him at first. Um, but a lot of people later, you know, come around to really like uh, like Sterling, and it was a it was a yeah. I mean, I I, I got a lot of auditions. I, I looked for people f to voice that uh, character. Got to remember, this is a free thing, so you have to tell you know you people. Um, hey, you know, can you stick around for like two years to work on this thing for us? with no pay <laughs> it's not as easy as you guys think and i i intentionally looked outside of the portal model community to find voice actors um uh yeah it's it's sort of become the normal sort of the like a lot of mods include music and voice acting from harry 101 uk and just right off the bat i love harry um i have like we didn't we didn't include him because we hate him or anything it's just we wanted to go in a different direction because all mods seem to sort of feel very similar um so i intentionally looked outside of the modern community to find other talent who loves portal um and is interested in like you know doing some passionate voice acting and will was we got so many auditions and all of them were like you know very your standard they sounded like us they sounded like average college students in the early 20s not a, like a not, lot of... not very interesting voices portal is a, is a, is a is a comedy you want some voices that stand out and are interesting not just a you know a guy from the street not just bland voices and will was just an immediate obvious pick if you go like monty always says that if you go back through the auditions yes yeah. Like it's just so strange how how it's literally all sound Dark the same, contrast, yeah. and then Will is just such a yeah such a stark contrast. Um, it took a while to find his voice and to find Sterling's character, and his character has changed so so much. 
Sterling was originally such a different character and it's changed so many times over the lifespan of this mod. Um, I'm really happy with the current iteration. I think the current iteration is the most interesting core uh, that uh, not in, uh, is is um, the most interesting version of that character. Um, sure. There's nothing that I regret about like cutting anything from him or something. Its computer aided enrichment center congratulates you on your 36 year sleep anniversary. By the way, did you remod re like remodel that ceiling thing with brushes? Yeah, I'm, I, I yeah, I use, a, <laughs> I use a brush just because the model looks so. It looks terrible. Uh, I was glad to light, because I, I always hated it. <laughs> So let's replace it, yeah. Thank God. Awesome. I've already edited this map too, because it was basically finished. I yeah, I mean, I might as well early on. Oh, not, yeah. Yeah, well before you try the team probably. The camera animations here are all made in Blender. It's a very interesting setup. <laughs> it is, because you do everything in Blender, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically just, an, just a mo 3D model with uh, an attachment point, so a bone that I just animate using a lot of weird IK stuff. I could show it off at some point, it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I had to do a lot of these custom stand-up, uh, wake-up animations and stuff like that for the player camera. So the lights turn on and nice projected textures and some uh, toggled lights which cause all sorts of problems. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if I don't disable the moving portal here, then you then you will get sucked up into the ceiling here. That was fun. That was a bug. I remember that one. Yeah, there was a bug with the moving portal, so I had to disable portals right before you get out of bed. Brilliant. That's still some nice toggle uh, lights there. We want to talk about the mirror, Monty. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I added this mirror because I wanted people to know that it was a uh, new character and not Shell. Uh, but yeah, it, it, the, the player model was very sort of, well, I wouldn't say last minute, but I had to get it finished pretty quickly because uh, it's uh, encroaching on the deadline. So I didn't want to leave it to the last minute. Yeah. But yeah, that was um, one of the more difficult things to get right, because faces, man. It is so difficult to get faces to just look not bad. <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, does she have a name? Uh, not publicly, but yeah, we just sort of because Chell never Chell's name is never um, publicly disclosed, but you can. She's not really a character, so we don't give her where are her children. Who knows? But you know, it took a long, long ass time. But she she never has a real real character because um uh it's just not it, it, we put more focus on the cause and uh I'm back. it's more of the end goal I imagine. <laughs> oh Definitely, because the first time I've made a character, so uh, it was a. Uh, I don't know. It, it feels like every, everything <clears throat> I first did those models for the first time, so uh, I had to basically learn as I was doing it. But uh, it took, it took uh, like it took like a week just to get to look right and fully textured and implemented. Outfit was a lot was was much easier. <laughs> much more happy with that. Definitely. Mm. To be 
accepted into the human emergency response team, you will now participate in an advanced That's difficulty wrong. testing track where your problem solving skills, athleticism, oh, right. response to increasingly hazardous conditions. God, this is a fun. This is all done in Blender. This uh, screen Please animation. Press the button to accept the terms. <laughs> I see it there. No. <laughs> Let's go. I think it's fine. I'm watching the stream right now, it's fine. I'm muted. Oh fuck, oh, I've been muted. <laughs> You've been muted. <laughs> okay, okay. I will, I, I will talk, I will say everything again. Um, I really like the um, the suit that we have here. They took a lot of iteration. First ones look very cyberpunky. Oh god, yeah. Um, and I, I was like, Monty, what are you doing? This doesn't look like Portal. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. lucky I didn't put it in the model. Bake it into the model, otherwise we. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now we ended up with this like swimsuit sort of rubber hazard thing that's like all one piece. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a zip on the back, I think, as well. Yeah, I think it's really cool. There's some clips on the sides. I think it's really nice. Def um, I sent you a lot of, like, pictures of Detroit Become Human um, yeah, that was, that was good inspiration. Nice stuff. Yeah, because I loved... Uh, like, my, my, my favorite sci-fi is, like, aesthetic, is stuff like Portal, Aperture, and um, Detroit Become Human, where... The whole world is completely sci-fi. Oh, I need to turn myself offline on Steam. <laughs> um, they really did this UI. I always forget how to do this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my favorite sci-fi is that which still feels grounded and not too, like a lot of like modern sci-fi things are just very like you know the typical angular designs and like 45 degree angles and very cyberpunky um uh which is also what this original version first looked like i really like the design and also the fong look at the fong sort of is so good at making using use of source engine shaders like the fact that this is like so slightly shiny this is harder to do oh. the source than you think it's very difficult because you have because Substance Painter is built for the PBR workflow, so you have to basically convert all the masks and everything. Yeah, uh, a roughness mask into a specular one. It's just a pain. And it's fixed off trailer, but yeah, I, have a good, yeah. I have a good system for it. Most tools so. nowadays just rely on PBR, which is great because you know everything looks the same in everywhere. But Source is still so old that like the shaders, that these shaders are are just completely arbitrary, whatever like specular workflow. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of mappers that I've worked with. Um, I mean Rory as well. You know, when when Rory joined as a mapper, he made as modeler, he made this store, made it in PBR, and it looked terrible in in Strata PBR. So I we we made the decision to just not use PBR in source because the Strata PBR was so uh, it just didn't work as the implementation wasn't done at the at, at the point. So we wrong. made the decision to just not rely on that shader so we don't have any you know extra stress with uh oh no we have to get the shader working and it doesn't work no because we already had a lot of stuff like that um yeah and and monty is really good at, at making use of the source engine versus the generic shader to make it look like it's people i mean look at the bump map with the hexen patterns it's so nice it's all that yeah. these these damn uh i'm not gonna swear <laughs> <laughs> These damn hints here were completely broken in our engine. I had to fix those. It took so long. Uh, I added this like also the day before release the interact hint here because I saw before that in playtesting a lot of um, a lot of 
playtest this, but you know, when you haven't played port in a, in a while, they try to use left click or like right click from Minecraft or something to do this. Yeah. Um, uh, so I added a little interact hint here, like f after five seconds, so you can remember to do this. But it is the third video here. That's actually a blend of physics simulation of the confetti. It's fun. Rory also made this uh, animated painting here, which is very nice. Yeah, it's very cool. And added the sound effects to this stuff. I think I, I wanted to have you go like be able to go into the the toilet at some point, but we didn't really have the assets for that stuff. You know, you would have to use the test chamber toilet, and like yeah. I don't know what the bathroom tiles would be. You have to do a lot of custom assets, so I I didn't. But there's a little awesome. radio in here that you can barely see. Is this closed? You were able to see it a bit better at some point. I don't know. Lighting. <laughs> Yeah, the sounds. The sound is recorded by me <laughs> on my uh, crappy laptop um, and my microphone. Yeah, uh, this env environment also took a long time to make. Um, this is actually really old. This is actually. Yeah, it was. It was here when I joined. Yeah. People, long, long I don't think anyone's realized yet. This is not an exact copy. Like I'm not saying this is supposed to be the, be the same place, but when you're in Portal Two in the container ride, uh, you travel across like a space similar to this, where you've got this like catwalk, and then the container moves to the right and smashes into the wall over there. I'm not saying that this is the exact same place, right? But this was very much inspired by that. This like layout. Mm. Um, yeah, because earlier versions of the mod, you you started in a test chamber, like normal, clean yeah, lighting, yeah, yeah. and that was so like original and boring. So I wanted to add this. Um, I wanted that when you get get out of the out of the door, you sort of have this like large vista, which shows you visually what the state of aperture is, right? Like, it's dark. The music is um, like somber and chill but also a bit like eerie and and dark and Jared did an amazing job making all of this music um he single-handedly just yeah it's, it's yeah. really good all of these like little interactive things like there's still something going on here like gel is still being pumped and some cubes still delivered but you can tell that this isn't uh active anymore as much as it used to be there's a lamp. Ace added those everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's even a fire on there. I don't know if anyone's noticed that one. That's kind of ra what? it's kind of random. But yeah, and there's also the blue line on the floor. That's always bothered me in Portal Two. That I've never looked down before. What the hell? Cave Johnson tells you to follow like a line to get to the manic uh, mantis man test or something. And then there was no line. <laughs> so I'm not sure that there's actually a blue line here. Even though there's no other way to go. I don't know how you could get lost, but that also feels a bit aperture to me. Um, to like, like our test, sub test subjects are somehow so dumb they can't find a way. Um, a guy just sent me a caps lock that he wants to map. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some some I I think it's really <laughs> I mean this is sort of like a like a weird visual gag that I wanted to make is um you're like ride this this lift into this test chamber, it's a lot of like anticipation and then there's nothing, you just walk to the exit <laughs> and you have to ride the elevator down again. <laughs> um it feels like you know it feels very aperture to me that you have this it, it, it's just so unnecessary to have any of this. They could have just put you into the elevator, but they made a test chamber because they're like, I don't know. Um, Ace did this uh, upper section here. We have a lot of these pre-made like instances that we made, like this here, this box is an instance. This box is an instance. This is an instance. <laughs> Ace used this a ton. Like, most of them were, like most of these here were made by me and then Monty also added other instances. Those instances make it really 
not not really easy. It makes it easier to decorate a large area without having to yeah, model so everything all the time. We still, at least when I make these decorations, I still try to, um, you know, model something new for our environment, so it doesn't just feel entirely homogenous. Um, but for some areas like these where you can't even see anything anyway, this is often all you need. Yeah, the glass is funny. Um, the glass in Portal 2 uses the refract shader, which is really expensive, especially if you have play on high resolutions. Um, so basically for every one of these glass shards, it would do a really expensive operation. So this was laggy as hell. These still use refract actually, but that's fine because this is, this is just one, two, three, or actually, I think that is actually the non-refract, is it? No, no, this this still, this still refracts, it just doesn't tint the same way, interesting. Yeah, so these still refract, but that's fine. You don't want these shards to refract, so we had to change them to not refract, so these are just completely translucent. Um, so it's a very late optimization I made after I got my 4K monitor. Yeah. It helps a lot. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of players, especially later in the bomb section, I had problems. The test chamber science, I mean, you, you don't see it now, I mean, talking about it in the next chamber. The doors are made from by, by November, I think those are really cool. They change color when they open and close. These instances are just Portal 2s, but I, I edited them to be a bit more generic, so you can, because Portal 2 for some reason has instances that, like the Act 4 ones always go down and they always clean, and the A2 ones always go up and stuff like that, so I just made a more generic version. Yeah, the doors are nice. You will now participate in a brain damage evaluation survey to determine just how damaged your brain is. If you believe your brain is sufficiently operational, press the button in front of you and continue the test. Yeah. Um, at first, this button was always here, and so you players would just walk up to it and press it. Uh, before Sterling was finished talking. And well, I don't like putting the player in the boxes too much, and I think I, you know, we still do that, especially at the beginning. Um, you sometimes can't avoid it. Um, um, but yeah. Then I made the button non pressable until you finish, finish talking, which is just really weird because like it's a button, you can't press it for some reason, then. Once yeah, he's talking, you can't. That was weird. So I added a little animation that of him dropping down the thing. You can still press it a bit early, but um, most players, most players, you know, they wait until it's finished, and then um, it just it just adds a bit of like why it, you can't press it immediately. This is actually just a, like a little joke about um, like you know you have brain damage, you have to press a button to prove you don't. Like um, I, a lot of like Portal One mods used to be basically just portal one again with like different chambers like chamber designs but like the exact same story progression and everything uh, um, gameplay pro gameplay progression um portal two portal two must didn't really do that uh i so i added this as like a little as this button testing thing as like a little uh oh who joined hello hi hi jared we're actually streaming right now uh, yeah, I see. <laughs> Maybe you can give us some insight in the sound, music, <laughs> and the sound design. So you did, did some sound design, right? I did, yeah, I did a little sound design. Not a lot. I did, like, an explosion sound and some some cubes. Yeah. Um, but this, 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 uh, cube button. Got the parallax. This, this first cube button test was, like, uh, you know, if you can't solve this, then you've got brain damage, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> to like bully the player or whatever. Um, yeah, the portal spawns are nice. They've, they've got some lighting on there. Some stat these are static lights. They are A big. lot of dynamic lights. Don't see dynamic lights because they're actually dynamic lights and static lights. That the, the talk No, they're not. Because talk level lights can't change position and they get ray traced at compile time. Um, Fair enough. And you can toggle them on and off the ish. So this is actually, yeah. This this one also has the same thing here. Very good. Please walk through the portal and continue testing. Your self-reported status is more than sufficient for testing. 
Was this the first chamber I did music for? Or was it the the room before? I think you made music for a behind the scenes area first. Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. But these were also really early. Yeah. Music starts from starting to finish talking. This button is actually just on a really long delay, on like you know, like a, f a million seconds or something. So uh, if you wait long enough, it will turn off. The, this won't though. So yeah. Oh yeah, Paris for the cute maps. Look at these. I mean, there are better areas to showcase these, but this is also not not terrible. Yeah, this is such a cool feature. Um, it's one of the best. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the greatest, as uh, coolest graphics features that we have. It, it just makes it look like the refract the, the reflections actually come from the lamps because it follows it, you know. Whereas with normal cube maps, they always need to like follow you around. But here, it's actually like, you know, aligned. So, so this can actually like sort of, it's sort of, it, it it can fool you into thinking it's ray tracing if you do it right. Um, yeah, the the lasers don't do damage. I will get into that on the ones we reach a chamber. I see the light on this, that's also nice. More parasite the cube maps there. Who was that? I think there's much to talk about here. Uh, just 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 that one, one, one thing I like about this style is um Yeah, this uh, people really really like this style, and I'm glad that we changed it because at first this was just like portal two. This was just yeah. like white lighting and very standard. You know, it was very, um, yeah, like more colder lighting, very clean and boring. <laughs> um, and then and then we uh, sort of remembered, hey, you know, this is supposed to play between portal one and two. In like the dead aperture, so I really try to lean into this with making these environments feel dead and like offline. So the lights are very are like all off, and there are some very lights moody. very moody. The music also fit because the music here was actually made before we changed the style. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it fits the new style so much better, honestly. And what I also love about the style is how you know in in, in overgrown. People don't notice the little details so much, but in here, like every little decal and um, little tile that you break, people look at, like people, play just always went here and look at everything, look at the lighting, and this is all st static, like baked into the light maps. Even these have little lights on them. Some nice projected textures. Uh, this chamber wasn't here for a while, this was actually before Cube Fling intro. Um, but I moved it because it was weird to have two non-portal uh, garden tabs chambers after you already had the portal gun. And I wanted to give the player the portal gun much quicker. This also, also took a lot of work to get this right because you could always just break this really easily. Yeah, I, I kind of like the very white theme here. Mm. Uh, I think I reuse the melody here a lot as like a lay motif. I think it's the most reused, like melody yeah yeah to me it's become the act one theme mm -hmm. um this these stairs cause a lot, a lot of problems oh god yeah because you could just run and then it gets stuck everywhere so there are a lot of clips and checks and whatever so because i just had to have this come in from the side you know i couldn't do it from the bottom i just had to for no reason <laughs> it looks cooler it looks yeah cool. the, uh... The trailer song is actually based off this track. Oh, nice. Which also shows up at the end. Yeah, yeah, the iPhone does so cool that you did it at the end as well. Uh, it, it also took some time to get this all, to always land on the button because it would always like land on its edge and then fall off. So there's actually a bunch of triggers and pushers and all, all of the stuff to get this always land on there. You can probably still have a chance that it doesn't, but you can just re-click again. But I had a seat yeah. happen. I've never had it. I've never oh. had it after after I you know, in like in the last year or so. Yeah, um, these white walls were also all remade by November. Um, oh god, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually, like she published them, and then I I worked with her more closely to get them looking the way I wanted. Um, because they had like. 
these tiles didn't match up or something. Um, so this, these, these are just more higher resolution and then I remade all of these like different variations of like these new panels with like stuff printed on them and uh, some of some with like aperture logos and some with like QR codes that I don't know what they even mean. Um, these floor tiles are very nice. I really love the new white materials that we have here. Some nice like wear and tear. That little panel animations. Please. Do you want to say something, Jared? What? Oh, no. Okay. So me is talking about the AI. Are you talking about the playtest or something that's happening now? Because that would be awful. But in the playtest, there was an issue. Yeah. <laughs> you look at the ceiling leak? Ceiling? Yeah, there's that's... water like leaking from the ceiling. Yeah. What's with that? What? Oh, I don't know. It looks cool. Yeah, <laughs> I love. <laughs> yeah, I added it pretty, pretty late. You did it. Yeah, this is pretty late. This like tilted stuff. I added it pretty late. I went through Act One and added a few, a, a bit more wear and tear everywhere. Things like the panel animations and this, um, because I felt like the the footage just felt a bit static. So I wanted to add a bit more dynamic things. Um, yeah, yeah. This 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 room is obviously one of those, you know, portal gun rooms, very close to portal one. Um, but I also tried to call to to combine two like the next chamber from portal one into this. At first, you have to just wait and you have to get it. Uh, and now you have to learn that you can also walk back through Orange Portal. It's like, I know that people have played, they should have played Portal 2 before they do this. Um, but I, I play this a lot with very inexperienced Portal players that haven't played it in a while, but still wanted to play test my game and stuff, you know. So I added a very quick tutorial um, for how these mechanics work. So th if you remember in Portal 2, there's Chamber 4, I think, in Portal 1, there's Chamber 4, I think, where you have to like, cross a gap and then shoot a portal and go back through your, por through your orange portal to teach players that the orange portal is not just an exit, it's also an entrance. So this is the same thing here. You're forced to walk back through here to do this. Mm -hmm. Players never think about it, but this is like one of those tutorials again. You get the gun, the little dynamic music piece. I've seen a few Let's Plays of the first Portal game where it takes them like maybe 30 minutes to figure out you can walk through the orange one. So yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, I'm just gonna quickly mention because of the um, a lot of you know very experienced Portal players say that this game is too easy for them, um, which I understand. I, you know, I, I, this was never meant like designed for the hardcore Portal players who already played like 1500 Rockshot maps. Um, this is made for your typical portal player who played it back in the day. Doesn't make maybe does maybe play games too often, and still um, wants to play this new one. And I think it's it it isn't bad to just add a little bit of tutorial for those who need it and those who don't. They can just breeze through it and don't have a problem. Then there's also the tutorial again that you have to shoot yourself over there and go through again. So basically this whole thing twice here, instead of just like extending this over here or something. There was actually glass here, but with performance issues, because you could just you know, look through here, uh, which um, was too expensive, I guess. This, <laughs> Monty, remember the volumetrics that we had here and then we didn't? <laughs> oh God, yeah. Before um, the rework. Yeah, so it's when we once we got Strata or you know once we got Portal Two Code Access, we found volumetric code for 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 these flashlights, protect the textures in the code, enabled it, and it was really awful looking. Um, it used like a card based system, they, which is fine, but the issue is it it wasn't like blurred pro 
and smooth properly so it looked really really awful but i built this whole area around this like volumetrics and then we decided to remove them because it looked too awful and then R rory saved the day and implemented his own ray marched volumetrics which are absolutely amazing sadly we just got this so late in development we couldn't add them to a lot of areas yeah only a few of them have them yeah because you really have to design your chambers around um around these like you 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 can't just go and enable volumetrics on all flashlights it doesn't look good you have to specifically engineer your maps to look good with this and this is one of those areas where it shines through very nicely. Yeah, you also have the clean portal gun. Um, which Rory also textured, I think, yeah. Yeah. Which looks really nice when it's under the right lighting conditions, because you can see a little bit of the, like, bump here. It's, it looks pretty nice. Yeah, this is also a cool little elevator. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to give a good of a good impression at the, at the beginning, so we built this custom elevator here. Aced and added like a, a, a lot more stuff up there and had uh, this tube circle around it. I think it's really, really cool. Did you notice that first time I saw it? Mm. That's pretty good. This puzzle is actually really good because it's a slightly more improved version from mm. uh, Portal. Yeah, War. yeah. The dialogue is just like a little joke, like or like thing to like speedrunners. Like everyone can have a whole record in this mod. <laughs> yeah, writing dialogue, writing like I, I sometimes call it small talk dialogue, where it's it's like nothing is developed. It's just sort of things happening, like Chorus talking to you. Um, it's pretty difficult, especially writing it in an aperture style. You don't want to be too derivative from Portal, from your from original Portal, but also not too different. It's a really hard balance. Um, uh, like we had the rods and cones joke at the beginning, which some people would like roll, roll their eyes to, like, oh, they just recycled that. But then we reuse it later and expand on it, and that you know ma makes it better and uh, adds another whole mm. dimension to it. Yeah, this puzzle, the, the, early big, the early maps are really thoughtfully designed, I'd say. I really wanted to teach players the right things at the right time. Um, and this is, players have identified that this is the impossible chamber from Portal 1. And then they, you know, they do the thing, they try to do this, and then they find there is no way to shoot for the Fizzler. Uh, I I made this chamber because I noticed at some point in Portal 1 you could actually just solve it by going through the Fizzler, placing a portal and getting the cube. Like This is a solution that works in Portal 1. Um, so you didn't even need the hole. And I thought that was so clever, so I designed this to like look similar, but it's, it's not exactly the same. To teach the players how these mono portals work, because it's a mechanic that's never really used in Portal too much. Uh, it's like it, Portal treats it as tutorial, but I love this element. It's so cool. Um, the only difficulty with it is when you have to have when you want to design behind the scenes areas, because you need to justify having a, a a portal spawner in your backstage areas, which makes no sense like canonically. So it looks really out of place. Um, also, I did this very late because I just wanted this to be a bit brighter. Also, some nice shadows there. Yeah, I had to do. I had to change the engine so that mono portals would show through walls, because in Portal Two, it would only show walls through throw portals through walls which are placed by the player. I think it's to, it has to do with co-op, but I didn't think about these, and. I deemed them to be very important for the puzzles, so we should always know where they are, so I disabled that check. Uh, mm. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, the music is really, really nice. Aced right. edit, aced it this little area here with the elevator. Yeah, again, some more like moving platforms. I just wanted to add some dynamic stuff to it. Uh, it's also did the upper section here. Um, these grades are actually really interesting because uh, Source Engine casts shadows from like if if you make a tech if you make this a brush texture, uh, then lightning lightning won't pass through it. You can this like you can disable shadows altogether, and then it will just let all light pass through. But we wanted to have these nice like sh nice shadows patterns. You can't see them here well, but you could see them in the on the other side. Um, however, Source Engine does actually support like properly sampling the texture, you know, transparency for lighting, but only on models. <laughs> so yeah, these, these, these aren't brushes, I had to make models that look, that that like um, fit, like this is one model, this is like 128 and I had to UV map this stuff on there, uh, and this is like 64 panels. So a lot of things that are really janky, like source edge things, and then, that's, and then Strata got a feature that it can now do this with brushes as well, but we never updated those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this chamber was, this chamber was, this chamber was actually very different. Um, then I, it didn't make any sense, like, it didn't really teach you anything, so I changed it to sort of just be a, like, uh, an expansion on the Fizzler, so it wasn't just one stray puzzle. So you have to, like, you know, Go up here, place a portal, go back, shoot up, and do that sort of stuff. It's still pretty simple. Six, seven seconds. Congratulations, test subject number one. You have set the world record for this exercise, and now officially hold first and last place on the leaderboard. More textures than just white panels, like the dark black style. I was wondering what you're using. I don't know what you really mean. More textures than just white panels. Oh yeah, one, one thing I wanted to say about this uh, test chamber signs is, in Portal Two, you could actually only have one sign per map. Like you have a you have this is an entity in Portal Two called BGI Screen. And then you have to select the VGI screen, and then there's a there's a there's a text file that the engine reads, which you know uh, lists what icons it has, what the number is, and stuff like that. So you can only have one per map, and that is so limiting. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once you got code, I programmed a new entity, which stores that data in the entity itself, and then the screen just reads it from the entity. So now I can have an infinite amount of, you know, engine limits still exist, but <laughs> I can have any amount of test chamber science, all of different data. And that really freed us up to um, put them where we wanted. Like if you, yeah. you, know, you, know, you notice that in Mel, there are often two chambers in the, in the same map. Um, and, and then they just connected with one of these like little rooms, but there's no test chamber sign. And I always found it really unfortunate, but I knew why it was. And you know, once P2C went going, I programmed this entity, and it was really, really nice. I had a lot of trouble with this puzzle, I think. Can't remember. Yeah, you remade all of these. Just oh, yeah. out of the bloom yourself, without enemy asking. <laughs> well, it's because I don't really bad. <laughs> yeah, I honestly don't even remember how the old ones look, but this one, you could let like, this one is, has a style change with the grade, right? But I look. So you, so you can tell that it's different, it looks really, really nice. But also just improved Fong, it's got a proper Fong mask, it isn't just one uniform thing. 
thing here up as well, and this one as well. I think they're really, really nice looking. Really good yeah, this is, uh, these. Uh, this is this is one of the first few models I made, I think. Yeah. Of retextures. Yeah, this yeah. this chamber. Um, I could talk for hours about this this little chamber. There's so much to say, even though it's such a simple little like area. But all of the design decisions that led up to it. Um, yeah. There have been many iterations of the laser intro, sort of introducing this with the thing, and this is definitely my favorite. Uh, I also, like, it also introduces the Death Fizzler, which is a, you know, a typical element. We don't actually use it that much, um, but I think it still enhances this chamber. Yeah, uh, one of the things I wanted to teach is, first of all, that this is not the aperture attack laser field, right? You can't shoot for this. Um, I don't know why, but aperture attack included a, a a laser field that looks like a fizzler. So it looks like yeah. a fizzler, but it doesn't behave like one, and you can portal through it. And there's even a commentary note where he says that he just thought it, thought it looked better. Yeah, it looks better, but it also behaves. It should behave different. Can you like? Can you save and walk through it? Yeah, it actually auto saves here, and then you can walk through and you die. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, add, added little hazard stripes here, just to like further indicate this is dangerous. Um, also, I had to make a custom material for these fizzlers, so there's uh, like the. I think there's an issue with the because when you when you re re reload a save, the music isn't stored in the entity anymore. Yeah, I can fix it with 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 soundscapes if I wanted to. But yeah, uh, just like you know, this is like a blue version of this because otherwise the sign would just pop in and out. So it's very nice. This is the only puzzle with like a red herring in it where. Some players think that this is what you have to do, uh, but then you know you realize you can't. And I think that's nice because it reinforces the fact that you know your portals get fizzled and all. Um, yeah, some people think that it's a bug that lasers don't hurt you, but this is actually a gameplay feature. It's be it's become pretty common and standard for uh, community maps lately. Um, because if you, when you have a, I will just solve the chamber. When you have a laser that travels through a portal, it's really frustrating to then walk through this. Like you would have to jump in an awkward way and then you always get hurt. It, this, is, this, yeah. this is even worse if you also have a light bridge <laughs> on the same place. We never have that. Um, but this, by its, this on its own is just like there's nothing. There's you don't gain any gameplay from this thing hurting you, right? There's there's no puzzle mechanic here. It's just there to annoy you. Um, it's fun in multiplayer, but since we don't have co-op, it's we don't we don't really care about that. So this is just to be not less frustrating. Um, but yeah, some players think it's a bug. Um, you can still jump over it if you want to, though. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, you also still have the you still have the, ref have the urge to do that, but you don't need to. I really like this chamber because it like introduces uh, this like three elements. I mean, yeah, whatever. It, it, it introduces like the death fizzlers tells you how they work. No, they don't work like an aperture attack. It's a cool little monoportal puzzle that takes some people a lot of time. And like I have had playtesters that got stuck here and told me that game was impossible. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I guess you maybe give up on a, on a beta test game a bit earlier because you think that things might not work as they should. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some players really, really struggle with this because yeah, it's just monoportal. This is something that you don't do if you haven't played any workshop maps or other mods. I actually really struggled to get this working for a while. Um, like there was a weird exploit, 
uh, to get the puzzle working, all I have to do is just add a ditch. There are so many cases where I touch to fix a weird issue in the map, I just have to add a, just oh. add a ditch. Yeah, yeah, I just have to add this ditch. Um, the music's also really cool, it's very dynamic. We've got different music for the relay and the all catcher. Right. It's very, very nice. Was this, was this the first one where I did, like, dynamic stuff, or is that yeah, yeah. the fling one? Okay. I think this is, because we, we also... Um, Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about Sterling. That he's he's like calling back to the previous rods and cones joke to sort of elaborate on that a bit more. Yeah, there was actually a second chamber here. Um, because we experimented with with using um, blue lasers because those went live in P2C. So oh, God, yeah. so we experimented with them, but they never really looked good. Uh, look good. Uh, they never really worked well. It was always such a hassle. They, they're more fun than you think. Like once you actually make a puzzle, lasers themselves are already very complex and like logical and like you know. I, I always call those, those types of puzzles circuit board puzzles, where you're basically just rerouting a bunch of stuff and it's not really like uh, like you know, it doesn't have any core idea. And those puzzles just ended up as uh, ant line messes and connections going everywhere, and you had to you had to have so many relays and catches in different colors. It was a it was a nightmare, but we actually had music made for those. We had different sort of styles for different lasers, right? We had the red lasers were like deep and slow, and the blue lasers were quick and chippy. <laughs> oh god! Yeah. yeah, I found I thought that it was really really cool, but sadly we cut that. We get a rip in chat. It's so sad. There's nice cut content as well that we just had to get rid of because um yeah shit didn't work. Those I think those tracks are still in the game actually. We had to send the test those out. Um, this was actually one of the first maps where I added where I experimented with the parasitic cube maps in a, in a test chamber. Or just generally like these materials are completely overhauled. So they still use light match generic, but they are important too. These just use a like a basically a white texture for lighting. It's it's basically just always reflecting white at at yeah. uh, at all times, which looks awful. <laughs> Once you notice yeah. like, how wrong it is, it looks really awful. And we wanted to you know do more with this dark style. I don't know why they did it, but um, I think it's I think it was maybe just the memory limitations. I don't know, yeah, because, no, because you use it on a bunch of stuff, you use it everywhere. It's easy to see the metalness when you have something like that as well. Yeah. It, so, you can always ensure that your assets look... So these consistent. just use proper environment maps, um, for proper cube yeah, maps, yeah. parasquected, it looks really, really nice. Yeah, this is a puzzle a lot of people get stuck on, because um, it, it requires you to respawn a cube. Which is something that we actually introduced earlier on, but people don't register it. Um, that it is, you know, something you... It's just handed to them on a silver platter too much, that they don't think about it as a... like, as they're, that, that, that they're solving a puzzle. Um, so yeah, we introduced the cube fizzle here in a pretty simple chamber. I was... I, I always try to make the puzzles, or just the environments in, in general, feel connected like the one space, and I think we've really succeeded at that. <laughs> Um, f even small things like having this be glass instead of a wall, it adds so much uh, because now you can go to the exit and you see where this is, right? At first this was a wall and I thought, hey, I could just make this glass. And things like this, small things, they just add up. I mean, later you even come back to um, uh, to this and can see it all, which makes it even more connected. If you look at this from um, out here, you're basically walking in like a circle, right? You enter from here, you go in, solve the chambers, you go through here, and then loop all the way back, and then you can go through this middle connecting area. I tried to make the layout so that these chambers really close, and then you can have the kind of disconnecting area. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> um, is SV cheats on? Yeah, yeah, I'm cheating. What the hell? 
You're gonna lose achievements. <gasps> oh no! Oh, I'm gonna lose achievements! You need to have hundreds of the game. Oh, my God. I've got them all already! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I beat this chamber, this way it closes. Yeah, this chamber confuses a, 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 a lot of people because you don't need to use portals at all, there's no portal surface. Um, I think this, uh, yeah, I mean, I it wasn't like intentional and like, this puzzle used to be much earlier, but I wanted to give the player the portal a bit, a bit quicker, so I put it here to teach the player cube swap. Because this whole map is basically just around teaching advanced cube mechanics. Cubes, cube, uh, cube, re cube respawning, cube swapping, then slinging cubes, and then uh, all of this, all of the free combine. Mm. And this and the, and, the, and the fact that you don't need to use portals also sort of um, reminds players that they're not always needed for the solution. Even though it's not something I don't try to do because the game is still called Portal. Yeah. I still I, in a lot, with a lot of test chambers, um, I went a bit off topic and did way too much without portals. Then I got reminded, or I reminded myself, hey, you know, this is still Portal. You should still have to use portals. Um, this isn't, you know, laser redirection puzzle. I think this bridge is really cool. It's something that Aperture uh, never really has in Portal 2, that you intentionally have to go through behind the scenes areas like this. Um, but I wanted to show off these like dilapidated areas or like you know, offline areas a bit more. So mm -hmm. we've got stuff like that. And I also like that the test stream sense like out here. And you can see the next chamber through here, which is really cool. It makes the area feel connected and large. This is actually a world portal. So right behind here is the on, you know, with lights on uh, chamber. So this is a world portal. You go over here into this, which is just a copy of the whole thing with no, no logic. And then you get teleported back. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, because toggle level lights are awful on, on large scales. Um, and this was done really late. If, if I had done it earlier, I would have you know, not had this so weird that this is like such a small area with this supposed to be really janky to set up, but it works. So you, know, you yeah. can teleport it here, it's really cool. Well done, candidate. You have successfully solved five tests. No, it's to ensure it's like quality. almost seamless, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You can s notice it a bit if you're moving around. There's like a frame where you. You know, when the same same location, but most people just see that as other things. It's it's something that nobody really notices. No, you don't. Yeah, it's pretty pretty seamless. I had issues getting the audio to work because it would like, you know, think, oh, he's not in a room anymore. Let's turn off the audio. <laughs> yeah. Look at that water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't we didn't do flow maps for everything. Um, no. Yeah. It just falls around have randomly. You need to simulate them so I what you fall in do you die yeah yeah that's nuts that's nuts <laughs> I really wanted to enforce or like have to like this is another one of these elements right like aperture is like turning off like the water is draining maybe there's a leak somewhere or whatever mm. um so so you can see all of the stains of the water where it's been and even some plants overgrowth and you can see what would be underneath it would be like some pipes um, I thought this was really cool. There was a chamber in in Portal Pro and Factum Solos, uh, which um, inspired me to do this sort of stuff where you like you know on the water level you shouldn't see this, but it's been drained out, so now you can. And it's very when you, sent, when you sent images of this test chamber while I was working on the track, I saw there was like goo and water, or whatever, and I kind of incorporated some sort of aquatic sort of sound in the track. Yeah, I think it's really cool. That's also, from, also from Half-Life. Yeah, yeah, you, you used that one sample from Half-Life because you... <laughs> yeah, I mean, talk about your design decisions for the soundtrack in this act, because I'm almost, honestly also really interested. Oh, I just uh, I made it. <laughs> you made it, come on, you can have yeah, more I talk about it. Like, you, <laughs> like, what, you know, what sort of... Because we, we talked about how um, the soundtrack should like be a mixture of the original Portal or Portal Two, mm -hmm. some half lifey like stuff half -life. in there, yeah. but also your own touch. And I think you can definitely tell all of the inspiration, but it's still got the unique touch of yours. 
I, mm -hmm. however, I I know that you definitely just uh, asked Mike Moraski to make the finale music for us. You know. Oh yeah, that's totally what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're on speed dial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't, you, you can't tell me that. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 that that's just you because. Yeah, yeah I, I I think you really managed to get that energy that I wanted. I I, I was like. You know, I, I gave a lot of feedback on the music, and I was always like, "It's not industrial enough in our idea." I, I wanted to be nice about it. I wanted just to say, like, "Feel free to be as industrial and experimental as you would like." You know. <laughs> I almost, I almost went fucking. Oh my bad. That was a swear. I'm so sorry. Oh, I, almost went, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I almost I'm, went like uh, Silent Hill for a few tracks, but I was like, "No, maybe I shouldn't do that." <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's a very nice mixture. It's such a chill music. It like their style was like this, you know. This was all like very alive on the lights were all on and stuff. Um and you made the track for that. What are your thoughts on that we then just change the sky change the style? Because now I feel like like this feels like made for the style. Um it, it fits so much better once we change the lighting. Uh. Yeah, look, it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool. Also, the nice Paraspray cube maps everywhere. Yeah, these oh, I didn't cool. see it, but these actually have like custom made particles that ha have like little water coming off of these. There's, there's still some more water dripping off that slowly mm -hmm. fades out. Um, this basically just teaches you that you you know that cubes can be flung, and they've got cool music. Yeah. Uh, I thought the I thought the music would stop playing while they fl like flung and hit the ground, but they keep playing. So now we just got funny little music cubes. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 some some people think cool. that it's unintentional. I, uh, but I thought it. I like. I wanted to do it that way as well at first, but I found it so fun that they would just keep singing. <laughs> um, and it would also you know make you notice the dynamic music much yeah. more. You're just hanging out. Yeah, it almost makes them like a character, like a cute little thing that's just singing to you. I think it's uh, pretty cool. I would have loved to do more stuff like that, but you weren't, you know, that available in the later stages. So we had to, uh, we couldn't, like, because Act One had crazy amounts of uh, dynamic music, and the later ones uh -huh. um, don't have as much. Uh, I don't know about Spotify, but I think we are doing a Steam release for the soundtrack. We yes, need to talk more about yeah, that. Steam for sure. I mean, I, yeah, we have to talk about it. We still haven't met really about it because I was just. Yeah, we're having so little time right now to do everything. We don't do everything, but um, yeah, it's tough. But, but, but we should have to talk about where we released that. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely up up to like every word that it's possible. But we still have to first, or Jared still has to turn these into like listenable linear tracks, because yeah. there are like you know like ten different files for the music in this map that all get turn on and off at, at, at certain points. Um, so to make them listenable, you've got to first do that. Yeah. Mica Grill, does that mean the cubes have people in them? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. They got little androids in them that speak with melodies. Yeah. This dialogue was actually added really late, um, because I wanted to... Uh, foreshadow that, or like, did, yeah, that was added when Sterling became a janitor. Um, so we thought that it would it would make sense that he would apologize to you about how the enrichment center looks, because uh, you know he's supposed to look after it. And mm -hmm. and we also wanted to show up, tell a bit earlier to the player that Sterling is not like this isn't a voice in the sky that's pre-recorded, it's actually uh, someone talking to you personally, directly. Um, the don't touch glass thing is really funny. I added that texture in in uh, BTS Wind in the first ch chamber of chapter 2, just as a, as a joke, because I, I was I, I was working at an office and they had all of this um, like glass with the, I don't know how it's even called, like the these decals on them, but they were like half translucent. I mean, these are fully opaque because it's no, actually not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, render glass is difficult. Um, so I, I wanted to add some of that stuff myself, and then I, uh, I got reminded, hey, you know, actually doesn't like to do touch this glass and stuff like that, and we added the achievements everywhere. Um, 
so when I touched five of these, it took a long time to get the logic for achievements working. My god, oh, the yeah. engine just didn't like that. Mm. I think it'd be funny if there's like a greasy finger smear on there every time you touch one of those. <laughs> oh, it's oh. So, so clean. Too late now. Yeah, this door is not in the gameplay demo video. That's and this so is all a bit different because this was changed later because players would just. They will try to run from the button to here consistently, like a lot of them tried that. So I added that to make that, um, you know, so they didn't think this was a timing thing where you had to uh, run over and switch the portal just in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, because they think that they have, have to put this there, uh, press this, and then run over to do this. You know, they tried to do this. So I added the added door to discourage that. Um, yeah, I mean the intended the intended solution is to do this. It's I like perfect. A lot more. It's like, yeah, it's like perfectly timed for that, which is a lot, a lot more fun. Because this is supposed to, to teach you cube momentum, and there are like catapults and stuff to keep the cubes always in a loop forever. Because uh, otherwise they will yeah. lose momentum, and you have a limited amount of tries. Yeah. Cube maps again. Look at them. I had to. This ant line was actually, it, it went all the way up and then over, but it, it reflected in a really weird way, so I, I just changed it to be not as noticeable. <laughs> Hacky ways. You can also solve it like this. Um, I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. But you basically wait for it to open. And then you do this. Like, this is more complicated, but some players do this for some reason. <laughs> yeah. How many. How many windows do you have to touch for the achievement? Five. Five, I think. Yeah, okay. five. That's throughout, throughout, spread throughout the whole game. Yeah, from the start to the end, all the way to the finale. Yeah, on the on topic of multiple solutions, I'm usually... Like, if the different solutions all require, like, the same amount of skill or, you know, thought, or if they're all the same, like, obscurity, then I'm fine with having more of them. I actually really like it, because that means that players have less chance getting stuck on something really obscure that they missed. There's a later level that I really want to highlight that. Yeah, and then you do this. This cube swap here is just to like reinforce it again. It didn't have to be there. It's just to reinforce this idea. Because this, you know, is sort of... We're teaching each element and then we're bringing it all together. Yeah, this door was actually right next to it here. Um, I don't know who suggested it in the playtesting. It was Hugo, I think. Hugo, yeah. That this could be moved back, so it's sort of a multi-stage thing. Because it just felt weird that there were like two exit doors. So now it's yeah. like... This is the door just for this area, and then exit door is here. A very subtle change, but I definitely liked it, so I added it. Lots of, lots of lasers in this game. You should call it, like, laser revolution. <laughs> It'd be cool, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, lasers are... Uh, lasers, to me, are like remote buttons, basically. I also fixed this texture, you guys. Um, yeah, and then, and then you can go back and see all of the things and play around with, with the chairs, which are all physical. Sacker Law says, how did you come up with the music cubes? I didn't. They were there. <laughs> they were just there when the chamber was made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I mean, that's the thing that Portal 2 has. People for somehow don't realize that Portal 2 has dynamic music. Um, you can see all of, all of the chambers where you've been. I think it's really cool. I'll just skip ahead. I've I've got cheats. I've got all the cheats to speed up the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As a dev, you use that um, a lot. Oh, yeah. Host time scale. Biggest lifesaver in the world. You have world. to play like if you work on a big sequence and you want to change something at the very end, you have to play for the whole thing, like <laughs> you know, thirty times. This game don't have anti cheat. <laughs> no, no, you don't get achievements. That's all the energy we have. Yeah, this. I, I, I will also, also, also just mention that all of, all of the dialogue 
has been re-recorded multiple times. It went through so many changes. Um, like some of the earliest stuff we recorded like two to three years ago, and then we've just kept updating this um, because the, the dialogue here was very different. Mm. And then I and then we added a little gag here with with the catapult because I wanted to add more sort of dynamic stuff into into the game at at, at that point. Um, yeah, not really much to talk about here. This chamber is funny. This is completely like this started its life completely built around this gag here. I will just show it if you. Oh yeah, caught caught off guard myself. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm watching this from the stream delay, and it's really funny because it'll be like, oh, this this cool thing here is really cool, and you'll just be staring at the floor. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I can jump, then it opens up this thing. Yeah, so this thing here that everyone really loves. The whole chamber was built around this. Like The first iterations were just void everywhere, and it had this jump and nothing else. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you just come up with a gag and have to build something, and then it ends up so cool that you redesign your entire test chamber to work around it. This was this also went through many iterations. Um, uh, this portal spawner was on the wall here, so, and you had to catch it as it was flying on the side, but players had real big trouble timing that, so it was moved to the bottom. Mm. The, only, the only thing I, don't, I didn't like about it at the start is that you could then solve the puzzle another like you could now do this mm. right it's intended that you do this and then you fling over but now you can also do this here i didn't like it at the start but i think now um this is one of those other multiple solutions which i'm fine with because if someone has a lot of trouble uh catching this cube in the air then they can't just do this i I always want to design the puzzles to not require like difficult timing or um, like precise shots mid-air. We have to turn around and line on some really small surface. Um, that sort of stuff really want to avoid. And in this case, you know, you can do the fling if you. It isn't too hard, hard to time anyway. Um, but if you can't pull it off, then it, with, a, with a bit of thinking, you have a second solution like this. Um, yeah, these panels are fun. They, they are because Portal Two only has animations that go like ninety degrees or forty-five degrees, but this is a very specific angle. So we actually like these are actually ninety degree panels, but I have a rotating brush that rotates like on the other way, so it like, counteracts the rotation and makes it rotate only this far. It's really funny. These are the small little hacks that you have to do in this engine. Don't the uh, don't the walls catch you if you miss one of these jumps? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have this on here, um, you will get caught. Still, even catch you. He he won't say anything. Sadly, um, he's just shaking yeah, his head quietly. Like, yeah, yeah, come on now. These panels extend and this opens up, and then you have this little little vista into the. Behind the scenes area. Gives up break if you do it twice. The area portal just gives up. Interesting. Weird. Um. And you can see the elevator. It's, it's it, like it's it is the same area. I think it's pretty cool. This this is shared. Ace originally built this, uh, but it was on the left side because the portal spawner was here. So this would how you would fail the fling, and then we added this whole thing, and then we moved it to the right. <laughs> I wish the logic for the left side still open as well. Still there? Yeah, yeah, like these are still all named the same. Um, and, and, and stuff like that. I I usually try to avoid re relying... Oh, this is really cool. This took a long time. Um, I usually try to avoid relying on... Uh, like, act like... Um, Anti-trap mechanisms. Right? Like, if you... like the, the, there shouldn't be a way to trap yourself. And if there is, then you should have the ability to respawn the cube yourself or something like that, you know? Um, 
this mm-hmm. here just felt very uh, punishing if you immediately fly into the wall and die <laughs> after we spawn. So we had a grade at there at first and stuff like that. It would just change a lot. Is this where we're first introduced to the Fable Portal Mall? The what? Or do we see the, the Portal Mall? Is this where we're first introduced to it? The ball? Yeah. Yep. It's just, just the, the ball is better for cube fl- for flinging through portals because um, it doesn't get stuck weirdly on its corners. Right. Oh yeah, this 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 is fun here. <laughs> Let me just quickly show triggers uh, toggle. Um, the ball has so much bounciness to it. It would bounce against the wall. And then just roll off really, really quickly here. Uh, I had a, that was, it was really funny, uh, but you have to be really quick to catch this. Uh, so I added this, these brushes, these triggers here, they're motion controllers, and we use them a lot. Um, it's, it, it's, it's called a funk or trigger funk. I think funk V physics motion, or maybe it's trigger. Oh, it's trigger. Trigger, okay. It would make sense if it was funk, but for some reason I thought it was like one of those weird edge cases. <laughs> yeah, um, we use this a lot to like you know improve physics slightly to just help the player a bit. So this just um, stops the player from rolling off too quickly. Like it, it sort of gets like you know caught, like it's on a really high friction floor here. Nice. Very very subtle things that. Um, just help, help the player a little bit. Okay, are you team ball or team cube? <laughs> hmm, I would... Uh, the, the, one interesting thing about the ball is the collision model um, is just, like, this is just a mesh that approximates a, a sphere, right? But it isn't a perfect sphere. Um, and there is actually a feature in Stratosource that you can make a perfect sphere, like a mathematical sphere collision model, and they have better rolling behavior. Like these balls just roll around infinitely and really weirdly because it's, it's just a mesh. So um, whereas the mathematically correct ones, they roll much, much more convincingly. And also, have things like, you know, if they hit the floor, they don't just like randomly bounce to the right or something, which happens to this. But mm, we, that's how almost we we never added added the tools to compile those sort of um, collisions into models. Uh, it's only available as a prop sphere. Yeah, we never added those tools because it wasn't too important, really. Nah. And here's another elevator. This one is more subtle. Here we notice that it's a custom one, except for the little slightly longer ride at the end here. We could see a bit of behind the scenes area. I really love what he did with the music chair because it's it's so it's like very nice cal- calming for solving puzzles. Yeah, I wanted something sort of meditative. Yeah, it doesn't get in, in the way with with your thinking. And it, and this like little alarm or whatever it is, these little like things in the environment that you like. It's it sounds like it comes from the game itself, from the soundscape, but this is actually in the music. Mm-hmm. Um, which is something that players will probably never notice, um, oh, yeah. but it, it, but it, like consciousness noise, but it adds to the experience that the environment noises are like melodic. I think it's really, really, it's really awesome what you did with this. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It also I I can't tell when it loops. You know, this is something that I had with other music where um, um, one of the earlier. So music producers was uh, Z Razlon. I think she might even be still on, on the stream. And we still have a lot of her music in there. I worked with her mm-hmm. at the beginning of the mod. And uh, some problems yeah, I had, I had 
yeah, it's really good. But some problems I had with that is, like, I love those tracks. They're really, really fun to listen to on your, on your own. They're very melodic and very heavily inspired by, like, you know, Undertale stuff, where it's a lot about the melody, not too much about the subtle instrumentation stuff. Still here. Um, however, a problem I had with those tracks is that they didn't work too well in a in the game because they would just um, not, you know, it's a two minute song and and it has a build up and, a, and an end and stuff like that. But in a game, you, you want it to be constantly going and not have a constant ramp up and slow down. That's understandable. Um, and, and you really did a great job at doing that and also providing the dynamic stems mm -hmm. for all of the uh, cool dynamic things we have here. Yeah, I have one of the uh, songs on my uh, playlist. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good. One of my favorite still things... Are... Sorry, you go ahead. I still really like the Rage Lines work. I'm still glad it, some of it made it into the game. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm also really, really glad. I'm also glad that we managed to... That uh, that you still had time to make that credits track. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I, uh, the the melody is still not as audible as it would originally wanted it, but it's it, it has its its own other very cinematic quality to it, which I really love for the credits. Um, that was yeah amazing, and I also love how how well you managed to mm, remix her tracks to sound like because pretty much the only thing that was changed are the sounds because the like her sounds yeah. wouldn't just wouldn't. Uh, match yours too well. So it, yeah, the melodies are unchanged, but the sounds and like instruments and stuff were like sort of changed to be more cohesive with the music that's already in the game. Yeah, yeah. Especially things like um, Complementar, which is a fan favorite yeah. track. Um, I think you really managed to keep the same essence but upgrade the sound. Mm -hmm. See all of these little details here, like the panels that fell off. Uh, I wanted to add a few of them on the floor as well. I would well. say upgrade, just like just more cohesive, you know, like what's yeah, 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 um, yeah. It it works better with the existing music because her her tracks are in a very um, she's very inspired by Undertale and Portal, uh, not Portal, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, which is also one of my absolute favorite games. Um, which are all about the melody and mm -hmm. she really could capture that so so well some of it kind of reminds me of like how some of the minecraft tracks just kind of like fade in and then go away after a while just randomly yeah yeah um, they're very serene it's more some in the background them. so little little things like these where the um i've just cheat myself over here where the cables like spark and actually stop sparking when you step off uh, cancel pending is a nice thing Yeah, I, I, I really love this uh, chamber. I designed this a long time ago. Oh, hey, Devon. <laughs> I saw your play for this. That was very, very sweet. Oh, I get to talk. <laughs> I think this is the first chamber to like kind of throw me through a loop. I was like, what's going on here? I, I cannot think with portals. This took me a long time. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is... I forget this one a lot as well. This is one Sorry. where players have troubles with... Uh, like one, one of the first... I mean, players have troubles in the actual first chamber. In in Fizzler intro and stuff like that, you know. But yeah, I, a lot of people. This is one of the first where they, for where they struggle. Um, yeah, because it's just more involved and it. But I still love that I managed to keep the amount of elements really low, because at one point there was actually a platform over here that extended out. Was it was like a rotating plat uh, arm platform thing. And there was a button. The, this platform was actually a, for the button. So, so you would. So there was a button that would turn that like on and off. Um, and the door was over there. So the, the solution was actually very different. You would put this button, this cube. I mean. Um, no. Yeah. Because the puzzle was that you had to get the cube over there, so you have to, so so you would have to. Yeah, now you had to respawn the cube, put it on the button here, then this platform would extend, and now you could walk. Uh, 
uh, and, and now you could walk over here and put it on there. And that was the original intended solution. And I, I liked it, except for this platform always felt really jank to me. And the ant line connections would like cross over and it didn't feel great. And then some playtester found this solution, which is the intended one now. Uh, and then I thought, wow, this is actually a bad, like I didn't think of this when I made the puzzle, right? So this is much more obscure and interesting and it, it requires less test elements. Like you can't just ignore that whole thing. And I always try to minimize the amount of puzzle elements in the puzzle because that it, it just adds co cognitive load um, and complexity in a non-fun way, right? Some I, I don't know if it's true, but I have the feeling that some players, some like uninformed, you know, players, think that difficulty, like puzzle difficulty, is correlated to how hard it is to make or how good it the puzzle is, right? Like hard puzzles are are really difficult but they are the best design and 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 if you make easier puzzles then you're just not a good designer um whereas i think uh making something hard on its own is really easy i can make something i can make a hard game really easy for you you just open up the game and you have a 10 percent chance of winning it <laughs> right. you press the button and there's a 10 percent chance that you win that's a hard game it's really difficult to get that <laughs> It's not fun, is it? It's also not fun to have a thousand ant lines and connections that you have to keep in your head that you have to do this spe one specific order. That's hard, but not fun. Um, I try to keep these puzzles interesting and uh, centered around a core idea. And in this chamber, it's this laser that you have to shoot through this portal both ways. So at first, you have to go over... what. Oh, I went for the portal back then. Um, at first, you have to put the, the cube here and shoot for this. And this takes players a long time at first because, you know, they try to do things like this and then run over and stuff like that. Um, so, I, so at first, you have to use the orange portal, orange static portal as an output. And then once you have this cube over here, now you need to use the orange portal as an input. And I love doing thing, things like that, where you have one element uh, that you use in multiple ways. Like here, it's an, first it's an output, now it's an input. And that, and that just gets players thinking a bit more. Mm. Definitely the hardest sort of type of puzzle to design. Mm -hmm. I also try, like, this is another thing that's, it doesn't really matter, but I love how that these rooms are, like, right stacked up next to each other. I mean, you can't really see from one to the other. I would have loved to add that. It just didn't work with the geometry too well. Um, I, I, yeah, I attempted to make the test chambers connect, feel connected more, but you can't see it. Like, I could have made this, you could see through here, but I would have been a visibility. That was just Finch and talking. Nightmare. Yeah, um, so I, I thought about adding like a piece of glass here or something that so you can see to the next chamber, but I decided against it because first of all, it's a visibility nightmare. Like you could then, like it would always render too much stuff at the same time. And it would also be confusing to the players because then they think that there's something up there that, they, that they're missing about the puzzle. And I always try to minimize this distractions from the chambers. Um, that look like they're like they could be test elements, you know. I'm glad uh, you say that. You know, yeah, I, 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 I really put a lot of thought into the first monoportal puzzles to teach the player everything they need to know. Because while it's not any, a, a new mechanic, you know, it's something that has never been elaborated on um, in any mod. This chamber is one where Monty always gets stuck. <laughs> yeah, no, I had one look for a long I did, time. I did no clip the first time. I was like, okay, uh, let's move on. <laughs> it's possible for yeah, you can you can use a cube and jump over. That's you know, 
another strat, I guess. It's not really a clever. It's cheating. Yeah, it's not. It's but it isn't something that I, I would I would patch up. In none of my playtests, I've ever seen someone do that. Like resort to that. Um, it could be fixed pretty easily by just extending the gap, I, I guess. This platform was actually higher. Like, like it, this platform was at this height here, so you would the stair would go up. Um, but then you couldn't see the catapult, so I moved it down. Subtle, subtle things that you just notice through playtesting. There was also weird, like, uh, moving platform. That did, like this would activate the moving platform, and the door was open for some reason. It, it, and then I just changed it to just the door because it was that was stupid. I'm glad that the chat really. Uh, uh, agrees with uh, the design of the puzzles because I've, I, I've received a lot of comments that um, you know don't understand that not 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 everyone is has the same skill set not everyone is as used to portal as uh, and that some games are just you know harder than others um, but I but I will also talk more about the uh, Design of the later of the other chambers whenever we get to them, but I don't think we we'll get to this in this stream. Maybe I don't know because I really want to take the time to look at everything. Um, yeah, this puzzle is very puzzle makery, very mel. It's got two fizzlers, and it feels very boxy. Um, I think it's still really fun. It's one of my favorite puzzles. Um, but yeah, two fizzlers that are all in different circuits is something that I usually don't do. Because I, I, while it isn't something that I, you know, desperately try to do, I always, as, as I, when I design puzzles, I try to think of how I, like, it's so easy to just add fizzlers to add complexity, but I want to add complexity without fizzlers. And I think the previous chamber is a nice example of complexity without any fizzlers, because uh, they can be really frustrating at times. Um when it's just about moving cubes around. So yeah, this is a pretty easy... Oh, I actually had... <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty easy... Like, cube respawn at first, most players figured it out. If you block the laser... The light bridges! <laughs> Ooh, the lights! Yay! Look at them. Some people think it's if it's this is like RTX. <laughs> it is technically a ray trace, just not not in real time. <laughs> that, this is a pain to get working properly because it, it would lag the game so badly. Yeah. So what these are? These are actually just a ton of of light entities in a straight row, um, and they're named. Named lights, you can talk. You can talk them on and off at runtime, and and what what it what it what it does is the engine computes two different light maps um, for both states. So the, so VRAD will compile one light map for when the light is on and one for when it's off. Uh, so it's pretty much identical lighting. Only difference is it doesn't do bounces, but you don't really notice that. Um, it's just to reduce like. How many faces it has to put on a page or something? Yeah, but yeah, this this used to lag a bit because it would just affect so many faces, and then I changed it to, um, I just set basically a max radius, and that fixed it. Uh, I also ha had to edit the engine to get the smooth fade working. Mm. Right, like you have this like it turns off instantly, uh, but then when you turn it on, it's like slowly fading in. You didn't you didn't notice it too much anymore um, because we had to reduce the amount of fade steps to, for performance, but it's like it is an instant. I mean, this catapult basically is, uh, is basically a one-way drop. Like it could have also been a staircase up here, then you drop down. It's basically just you know you can't go back to it. Um, but I thought the faith pit was was more interesting, and I also designed the. I wanted the final puzzle to basically use all portal two elements 
It doesn't use the, the tractor beam, but it uses lasers. It uses laser blocking, which I wanted to add. It uses cube respawning. Uh, it uses the light bridge for the first time and mono portals and catapults. I, I just wanted to like have everything in there, and I think it's I think it's pretty nice. Also, the, the this was added pretty not pretty late, but uh, late in the when I first designed the puzzle back like three years ago. Um, so you just make the facility feel more open and they're connected. You laser I'm blocking is, uh, Yeah, how connected everything is. <laughs> yeah. Laser blocking is really cool. Yeah, and, and this is where most players get stuck. Is they, do, they do this and then they don't know how to proceed because to solve it, you have to do, basically do the same thing again. Even everything got stuck on this. <laughs> oh, really? Because you, yeah, it's something that, that it's something that melded a lot, where you have to do the same thing twice. It's also what the previous yeah. gamer does. You have to do the same thing twice, and it because it, it it this it doesn't feel like you're making progress, right? Um, but there is a change now. This is blocked, and do you do it again? I have the light bridge, and I can put it down. I think that's pretty cool. Well, also, the nice cube map here. That reflects the laser light light bridge. It's so fun. Some more cool parallax corrected cube maps. Very well done. Yeah. I think this track also uses the uh, the truly theme. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Also about the the light bridges. This lighting only works here because the light bridge can't. Like, I, I don't have control over the light bridge, right? Because I can only place the blue portal there and it comes out here. If I had the orange portal on the light bridge and I could move it wherever I want, I couldn't do this. This only works yeah, because I, we always know where it's gonna be. And we just have like portal buttons up there to detect if this is uh, active or not. Yeah, little like fake out chamber. I mean, I, I thought that it would be very obvious, but a, a lot of players um, really got jumped, like scared by this. I really wanted to highlight animations because that is something that I think this makes this mod really unique. Is we have full, uh, fully animated, unique animations for the characters talking. Oh, and yeah, that also. that took a lot of effort and a yeah. lot of time. The only person that, that could get a uh, face poser working. Yeah, like, those are all made by me in face poser, and face poser is a tool that's. <laughs> More complicated and more like it has more features than Hammer, um, and it's really complicated and hard to work with at first. Um, and it's really unintuitive how the system works because basically I don't have control over individual bones. Like I, you, it is like animating in, in Blender. What did, what did, how this works is you basically have pre-made animations, and you can sequence those together so things like like the like the head shake is a pre-made animation i can just put it in um but for other stuff like when he looks at you and like you know is, is sorry and he looks up and moves his eye back and then back to you perfect timing and then does stuff like that those are more custom animations where uh you take the um Basically, there are animations that are one frame long, and they're just the core, like looking up at the right side in an extreme animation. And then you can use curves to sort of, you know, make your own animation with that. But that's such a tedious task. And face poser, like you can't even 
scrub around in the editor you have to just play from the start and always restart yeah it took a lot of time and also this scene i had to reanimate i think three times because the the lines were changed so much all the time <laughs> and i was always like guys please don't let's not change them too much anymore because i, I don't want to animate this again but yeah i had to animate yeah. this over and over again um god yeah this this one scene just the the come the ones that are coming up as well had to be like redone like yeah that. yeah there's so much that comes up so many like nag lines that are all fully animated um, yeah, this I also changed a lot. This like little congratulations banner was made by Mike a long time ago. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I already weird because the model. <laughs> At first, the uh, uh, the elevator was over here, and you'd have to like walk through a door there. But players didn't see that ever, so I just put it right in front. So maybe players before they walk to him, you know, players always want to look around first. So maybe they tried this and it's blocked and um, yeah, the the ages reference was uh, written by I don't know if it was, it was written by Ian. Like the the writer from Mel joined us for a bit on the team. Um, I don't know how much of his stuff actually survived, like like straight dialogue, because I I kept changing it over and over. But he definitely helped with. Um, characterizing them a bit, the characters a bit, a bit more. Although, uh, yeah, it's actually quite long ago that, that we had him. Um, it was it, it was before we had the new voice actress for for Conley. Mm, so definitely. Conley's character changed drastically once we got her. Like she, I will, yeah, get her. I want to meet her. Um, Yeah, uh, this like little presentation room for presenting how the portal spawner works. Again, it is really difficult to make mono portal puzzles in behind the scenes areas because you have to justify the use of like why is this here, right? Um, so in in, the, in this case, we thought, yeah, you know, maybe they're like showing it off to investors or something. Um, yeah. I wanted to make a video here that like is one of those elevator, you know, bendy style videos. Um, that like presents it to the to the investors, but you know you only have so much time, um, so we have this no signal here, in BMOS. Yeah, the, and the, the little thing here. This is just raw Ipsum probably. Yeah, just sterling with the flashlight, leading you through stuff. Yeah, things like the, the the head shakes are existing animations, and then uh, things like him opening up and then rotating slightly are like more manual things. It's a lot of nightlights. Most people don't. I thought more people would see this at the first playthrough, um, but I've not watched many people. Yeah, no, it's definitely an after thing. Yeah. I mean, most of these nightlines are just like little head nods, very simple things. It still takes a lot of time to add those, however. Um, God, yeah. And also test it all and stuff like that. Because even though the preview looks one way in face poser, it just looks different in, 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 in game. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> the nightlines, you should have a listen for them, even. Sure. Right this is actually a conditional nightline if I open this. He says that with a reload, and I and and I just wait for him. He's like impatient. There's more black ones. <laughs> well, if you don't even want to try, you must be very sure it's locked. There's another one, <laughs> depending on what you do. I yeah. never knew that nag lighting existed. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I never saw that one. Squeeze through that counter right there. Or are you too voluminous for that? Voluminous, a very scientific fat joke. It's the only one we have. <laughs> We're not too fat, I'm just too tall. 
exactly. Yeah. There's also a custom thing here. Yeah, there's things like that that are more like unique expressions for the animation, so those are more custom um, made. Like that. Yeah, it's just like a long time to make. And Facebook is also just so weird and unstable that it just didn't run on Monty's PC from, like, for no reason. It's like su working su randomly. Such an archaic cool. program. Yeah, but at that point we already had almost everything done and we were in basically in crunch and yeah. I just had to finish them myself. Definitely. I know it's not the one. At some point he does like 3, 2, 1, go! Which is a cool anime. Yeah, I, I, I had a, like animating these cores is a lot harder than you think at first, and because I had no, I have no animation background, right? So I, yeah, I, I had to learn all about like, you know, how you lead the eye before the body, um, and also just observing how people talk. I was gonna add him there, I guess. Yeah, a bit, a little bit. The secret chair room? A chair room. Oh, you mean the, the room temperature room? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, with, with anime, so, like, well, I had to learn all of the animation uh, like principles. I, I, I tried to find other people in my school that could help because uh, I wasn't, like, I was in the, in the IT department sort of thing. Um, and there was an, another wing where they did like animation and character animation, and all of that stuff. So I thought, you know, let's collaborate. But yeah, um, most people in school are, they just don't do this sort of stuff in their free time. Um, except for me, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it is really interesting. Like you, you don't think about these animations until you actually try to make them yourself because it's like you have to observe how people like how people move their head as they talk because I don't have a, a human with hands that I can like ha make hand gestures. It's just a single eye that can move around. It's like animating that is so uh, such a different experience. And I found myself making like you know moving my head and my face around as I'm animating this stuff. I felt really stupid. <laughs> um, um, yeah. And then also just scripting all of these scenes uh, to work in the engine. It's like the, the logic is an absolute mess here. Um, God, yeah. I have to go around. Yeah, this, these, these offices, um, Portal 2's offices are mostly very blue or like white. Um, I really wanted to lean into the Portal 1 orange aspect. You know, these like Portal 1 chairs. Portal 1 had a very orange aperture aesthetic and I really liked that. Um, and I want, and it also fit very nicely. Like in this act, it fit very well with the uh, test chambers because those had all red lighting. Um, so I also designed uh, offices here to, to have very like to have like orange carpets, orange tiles, um, these like dark brown everything, like a very orange theme, you know. Um, it is something that you probably don't notice, but I try to keep each act have a like have each act have a different color scheme. Um, act one like acts are you know there are, are the chapters and. Two chapters is one act. So act one is chapter one and two. Three and four is chapter is is, is act two and stuff like that. And act one is very orange, right? The test chambers are are red and they, these offices are orange. Then you've got the big fan in the next map, which is orange, and all of that stuff. 
and uh, chapter three is very green and plants and like blue it's very it, it is very lively chapter four is very blue just like cold dark depressing blue it's uh, the sort of like 80s era um, and then chapter nine is again blue but um, it, on the surface with the green plants and some natural some like man-made lights um, yeah That was an island that was much harder to make than it, it than it seems. But yeah, you can see just all of the little little decisions, like all of this stuff being very yellow. You know, I, I used more of these textures here, um, and and these sandy uh, plastic tiles. And also, Sterling is also orange, but that's uh, more of a coincidence. <laughs> I always wanted the, the course to have the orange and blue color scheme. Um. Didn't he have a different name originally? Was it? Yeah, Sterling was originally Child called Portal. Sterling was originally called Pete. <laughs> the default route. This chapter was called uh, something else before. It was called Off Track shortly before release. I renamed them all. Because those were those were just placeholder chapter names. <laughs> yeah, here again the the like carpet. You probably noticed by now that the facility isn't in great shape. It's a long Orange story, so I'll cut it short. The central core in charge of maintaining the facility has been put out of commission. I tried to look after the place in her absence, but I don't have the tools. Good news though, I found better tools. A device capable of repairing whole enrichment center. Problem is that only a human can turn it on, so I hoped maybe you could fill in that role for me. The life of every human and core in the facility is at risk if we don't stop the collapse. Come on, let's go. I'll explain the rest on the way. Yeah, this anime was also remade many times. The dialogue has changed so much, and it's been condensed more and more. It's still really long. I don't like putting the player in a box. Um, but you have to sometimes do it for exposition. I prefer to do it at the player's leisure, so I put more exposition on the way, right? But just for the absolute basic plot to get the player's attention on at like about what your goal is now. Um, like, hey, he hires you to find this this tool, right? Um, I wanted to make sure that the player catches that, so we put them in a little box here for a second. However, I tried to design this room to be as interesting as possible for those that don't look around. Like there is, there is this thing here um, that Monty made. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. Where was this designed from, Monty? This was based off a McDonald's career ad. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And you just randomly sent it in a inspiration channel. I was like, hey, I can make that. And I made it in Illustrator in like like an hour after you posted it. You were very surprised. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very yeah. funny. Yeah, then, it, was, it was pretty fun. So, yeah, yeah. You, you made that so quickly. You made Like, this was just just a circle. And it was like for McDonald's. Blue, I think, first time. And then you, you made, made it orange. blue and then I made it orange because I wanted to fit in this theme. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's so cool. It's, I, I would have loved to do much more of this wall art. Um, but yeah. Uh, this was made by November. I, I asked her if she wanted to make a poster mm. to like have the because players. I noticed that players would walk here, look at the wall, look at this, and never look at Sterling. Mm. Um, that was when that was the thing. I had the door was here, so players would walk in, walk here, look to the right, and Sterling would come much 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 later. So so they wouldn't see Sterling uh, right off like on the rail as they walked in so they like you know naturally looked at him he would come out later so people were already looking at the door were wondering why it doesn't open and then don't realize that Sterling is talking to them here <laughs> so, <sighs> so so then I moved the door over here to have the players face this way already and then Sterling you know comes in as you're walking in and you notice him 
mm-hmm. and, and, and he talks. But for the other players who are too annoyed at this, I added this poster. Like, um, do not I- ignore not. employee orders, leave premises, consume any objects. What's, yeah. what's, the, uh, what's the story behind the lamp next to the poster? It's an orange lamp. I placed it there for decoration. Oh, wow. There's nothing about it, really. This is a Portal 2 prop. <laughs> Special lamp. Did, did, did you think something? Did you like uh, figure up the lore of this lamp or something? <laughs> yeah, that lamp's named Genevieve. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, players never like it when they're just forced to listen to stuff. I try to keep it as minimal, minimal as possible, but there's still some scenes like these where you, to, ex- to explain the absolute necessary important information. I just ha- trapped the player in a box for a little while um, and try to keep it as short as possible. And then on the way, you know, we have Sterling here and he talks to you as you're walking now. Talks about the elevator as you're walking, so you don't have to, you know, you're sort of on your, on your own pace now. I don't want to talk to, to talk too much about the beta stuff because there's so, so much to, that I, I can't talk about. Um, But basically this area has existed for a really long time and it's still in the game, it's it's just survived so many iterations. But yeah, I remember this was like back in like what, 2017, 16? I can't remember. I made this first in like 2018 or so, yeah. God. And this would, yeah, this was back when we had Portal 2 test chamber beginnings. Oh, so very very old. Um, I mainly want to talk about like the current iteration, which started like twenty nineteen around around about there. Yeah. Yeah. This room has also changed a bit because at, at first this like this didn't like, this divider didn't exist, uh, and there, 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 there was a lever over there that you had to flick, and I'm just surprised how you know playtesters didn't find that lever. They looked in here, looked around, and then walked out again and, you know, tried to open this door or, or whatever. Um, so then I had to trap the player in here so they realized that this is where they have to go. Um, those are just su- those surprising things you only notice in playtesting. I then added the, the divider and the button here to kind of guide the player's eyes. You know, they come in. They look at the glass. The glass is a is an area of contrast on the wall, so players naturally look at it. And then they also notice the red button. Then they walk through it. Have to have this like weird S bend, and as they exit, they already notice the door and the button, and that they have to press it. And also just moving it closer made the correlation easier that this opens the the door. Um, really small things that no one will probably think about now because you know it works but the previous versions were like subtly more challenging I guess because the button the, the level just wasn't as obvious Shadow's yeah, beautiful weird. yeah Shadow's, Shadow's really cool I especially love this like very long shadows on the yeah, definitely. computer monitor yeah I have to push the button this room yeah this is also against the like very orange tiles this is even a custom material uh, like a very orange version of the carpet divider and stuff and this this is like a weird like sort of play space thing like creative room you know like no furniture it's like where like you know like 10 people stand around the whiteboard designing the, the next half-life half-life game or something like a valve employee yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, oh yeah the, the re- oh we wanted to replace them all with with with, with, with the white with the white version but <gasps> Left it doesn't matter. Yeah. We only wanted to do that because uh, th- this was also made by Mike. I cleaned mm-hmm. up the architecture a bit because he misspelled aperture. Um, <laughs> oh, oh no! Um, but it, Mike made this one, and uh, he made a a a red, a black, and a white version. And I always preferred placing the white version because it didn't pop so much, right? It wasn't as uh, yeah. like attention grabbing, and I wanted to sort of reserve red as a as a signal color for buttons and things like that so i changed it to white and then Mo- and then monty at some point you said um that it feels really aperture that uh that they don't color their fire extinguishers red because it looks better if they're white <laughs> and yeah, I thought, yeah that's totally that's totally in like aperture they they they're more 
concerned about the design than the, that than being able to notice them. <laughs> yeah. So very dark offices. This is actually um, reference Easter. It's 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 just I was working at, at an internship for a company in a like IT department, and once it was done with all of my programming in two days that they gave me a month for. Um, <laughs> they didn't think I would finish it that fast, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, that was a super easy task. Um, but yeah, then they had, you know, like, uh, hey, you know, just set up the monitors in the accounting department. Oh, yeah, sure. That sounds exciting. Um, <laughs> so this, th there was like this large, you know, like these boxes of monitors in, in the hallway with the monitors. And they said, put this up. And I was like, what this many? I mean, this was like way more. Um, so I, I added that into, into the game. That was around 2019, I think. So this is you can that's, that tells you how old this area is. God, yeah. Yeah, this 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 little poster I made that. Um, the background is a is a photo I took in Croatia, probably also three years ago by now. Um, oh, cool. I really Do love that. I really love the color palette of this, mm. like the <laughs> the blue gradient, and the like how dirty it is and all and the. The topography is really simple. It's a very simple poster, but I, because I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not really a graphic designer, but I can still make stuff like this. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I, I didn't know. And then I, players I try, was... players try to shoot it or like touch it, and and, and I'm like, yeah. so it was. You often suggested that I should make it explode, but I thought, you know, maybe. I mean, the acid aperture must have dried up by now. Or maybe aperture just always lied. They just always scared you. Maybe this wall is just so precious to them that they don't want you to touch it. So, so they just scare you. To... I mean, this is inspired by the uh, Portal 2 sign that, that that just says, this sign is radioactive. <laughs> Caution. It's it's something like that. Um, yeah. So no, the uh, backdrop uh, picture was... Uh... It was a photo I took in Croatia on... I thought, yeah, I thought it was a really good. Nope, I took that one. That's pretty good. It was really nice, yeah. It was a very good photo. Mm. Uh, yeah, it took um, all of these like little shadow things here, like um, s small scale like detailed lighting works on brushes really nicely, but on props it's not as not, not the same story. First of all, it's vertex lit, so on brushes it lights every. Vertex, I, I, yeah. I can even show our Luxels or what is it, Lux Matt Luxels. Like it, it stores light. This is kind of hard to look at on the fork history. Um, the engine stores light information for each intersection here. Um, so it stores like, hey, this color at this position, this color at this position. And in the editor in Hammer, you can set the resolution of how how detailed the lighting should be, basically. So I try to optimize it to be high detail around where it matters and low detail where it doesn't matter to save performance. There's, 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 there's a usual thing, you know. This is, these are, these yeah, are just light, light maps, oh but, god, but the stream is dying from the oh god, but props, right. but props are are vertex lit. So for each vertex, if you don't know, like a vertex is each like corner, a a model is basically like a, um connecting a bunch of dots and then drawing faces between them. So it stores light yeah. data for each vertex, and that means that if you have a face like this, where it's like one big face. It doesn't store vertex data for the face properly, but only for the corners, and that stuff can look really ugly. And we had a lot of problems with this. This is why the lighting just doesn't look as good on on, on props as it does on uh, yeah a, on on brushes. It's just a it's just a at all. it's just a limitation with the source engine, and also it it like lights props differently to um, brushes. Like you can make a model that uses the same material or like the same texture as a brush put them next to each other, and the model will be darker. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Matching these together is really difficult. Um, takes a lot more time than, than you would think. And there are some, some like, you know, bugs still, but... Yeah, you, you will never be able to get these look as well as they could in Source, just yeah, because no. it uses vertex lighting, and it's awful. Uh, there were attempts by someone on Stratosaurus to port, like, to make vertex to make light map static props which is something that tf2 had and apparently they got the they got it actually working but wasn't weren't happy with how tf2 did like the unwrap the, uh, the automatic unwrapping 
and it also had still a lot of issues. Like the implementation just wasn't final, so we sadly couldn't make use of that. It would have been an absolute game changer if it worked as well as light maps here. That would have been a real life changer. Yeah. Yeah. And the multicolor cabinets, those are made by Allison, I think. Yeah, they are. It's a public asset that everyone can use with permission, of course. Yeah, I also yeah those are pretty cool to, to like match the sort of theme like here it's uh, orange and here it's blue again, very much inspired by Stanley Parable where they also have the orange offices and then the like blue themed offices. I think that's pretty fun. Yeah, hint here again because players like forget how what the crouch button is. Some players think it's shift, others think it's C. Just have to remind them of this stuff. This is a cool area. This is also pretty old. You drop into here. Up ahead is the turret disposal facility. Since they're all defective, they shouldn't be able to hurt you, but still be careful. Cool. Yeah, this room is really cool. This talk this was kind of kind of kind of a surprise and it became sort of a revol a port revolution like, you know, staple sort of known shot picture, like screenshot area. Really, really cool looking area. And I added these volumetric projected textures here. But then we removed those and then it kind of lost the feel. But now we added them back because Rory is a savior and a hero. <laughs> yeah, this is still a really cool area. I love that like it that is like interactive and it it turns on the lights and stuff as the cubes go through. Um also this was a demonstration for multiple projected textures, right? Because in Portal yeah, 2 no. you you can only have one enabled at a time, but here we've got three. We actually had four, but it was too expensive, so I shut this one down. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It is off for performance reasons. <laughs> too much. I am surprised how well this runs with... Uh, yeah, volumetrics are really cheap, honestly. They don't eat up much performance, which I'm no. really glad. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah, this little intermediary area. Um, this originally connected straight to here. I'll talk about it in a second. Yeah. This vista is really, really cool. Mm. I spent a lot of time lighting, in the lighting, to look how I envisioned. It was, um, you always I take credit. I made this room. <laughs> oh, you did, but I, I just, I just added a little to the title. Yeah, it just made it an extra hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, so I made this room, uh, um, and you would first come in from here. Entrance was here, and this pillar was like solid. So uh, a lot of sort of didn't see the the fan here. A lot of players walk in, look at the right, and then the door would open here already. So they would just walk in, never look at any of this. And just finish. Um, and that was sad. So one f first thing I did is I opened up the grate here, so players get a glimpse of this, and maybe hopefully see. They didn't. It didn't help. Um, so then I had to move the door over here. And while I was because these these areas are so close together, right? These were so interconnected. There was, so there was already a lot of work to get those separated again. And while I was working on that, I thought I would also add this the media area to save performance because like you had f these this the, the the previous room with four protected textures and then um you have this large area with a lot of, with a lot of props and another protected, protected texture it was just too expensive to add in the leading intermediate area and stalling talks here yeah it's a really good area i love the this was when i really started to like get a grip on making unique looking areas that like and hallways that move in and out of itself like you use you come up from here and you see the bridge on, on the end and the catwalk and you also see the glass down here the player doesn't notice that this is where they where they're gonna go but once you come back it, it just heightens the experience of uh this isn't just a one-off thing and now you're gone, but you actually go get to move around in this space and portal across and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But first we go on a detour. This was a, another performance uh, thing here. This little vault, I have to close the door first, 
then I enable an, an area portal, or well, I disable it, so now nothing behind here renders anymore. Um, and then I enable this one, because I don't want both to render at the same time here, it was too expensive. Yeah, that dialogue was <laughs> really dark. <laughs> Players loved it a lot. Uh, this is nice. You made this much darker, Monty. This was also I like I love the sprite here. Did you add it? Yeah. This was a bit brighter before. Yeah, I, I like my dark environments. <laughs> yeah. With the think, nice volumetric flashlight. It used to be dark, and now I think you. Made it brighter, and I hated it. I, I, I changed, changed it back. I, I removed the exposure change. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree that it wasn't there. Yeah. But yeah, it's with the with the, the red light with the with the spotlight there. I just, I just love it so much. Mm. Yeah, this down area is really cool. Um, we sometimes rely on projected textures for lighting, like you know, static. Like this light doesn't move. There's nothing that. You know, we don't use it for the dynamic aspects. We use it because it just looks better than static lights. Because, um, or, or the, like normal lights, like baked light maps look good again on faces, but on props they don't. So you could never get this sort of lighting on a prop with just lights. It just wouldn't be possible. Yeah, it's good to tend to like uh, combine regular lights with with um textures because they don't bounce light at all. So if you just light a room with just Fair textures, it can look kind of uh, really like contrasty and really just sort of weird. Yeah, well, I remember that that fan corridor used to be completely fair texture lit and everything really broken. Really weird. Yeah, yeah, that's that is true. Also, I think that was only an issue because those uh, those white textures in the in the fans, they used to have like they used to be lights not you know they used to be light textures, so it would generate lights on compile time, but then. I removed that, um, and then that broke, yeah. Yeah. I mean, here it is a pretty extreme example where there's almost no bounce light here. There's a tiny bit, but not but not much. Um, and then, yeah, live towards a little bit of a, of a, of a warning, I guess. And then the wind turbines. Yeah, the wind turbines. I um, that was during the like ba during the reboot basically 2019. It's, it's when this map started pretty much. Um, I I already had a lot of like cut areas of like just random BTS areas, but they were never interesting. I I I just couldn't think of interesting like test like puzzles for the behind the scenes areas because some some players they. Uh, uh, some there are there are some workshop maps where people make test chambers and they just like change the textures so it looks like behind the scenes but it still uses like normal test elements right and I didn't want to do that because I felt like there are certain puzzles that you couldn't do in test chambers that you can do in BTS like this thing here would be a bit awkward in 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 a test chamber, right? Same with the conveyor belts later, or 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 here. This would be a bit weird in test chambers, but for BTS it makes perfect sense. So I tried to utilize behind the scenes areas for things that you would not expect in a test chamber, and then to use test chamber elements in test chambers. So it isn't just a different theme; it's also a different gameplay. And the fans were one idea. Um, the particles were made by a random cat dude, which are really nice because they are they are very obvious and um, because I, I started had a lot of problems conveying to the player that there's wind here, so I had to I had it like you know start disable and when you come in it blows everything away, but then players thought it was disabled so because they didn't see these uh, turbines so they just walked across and got blown away, so we added the particles. We also added the little sprites and the like, you know, swinging cables and the door. Um, the door just serves as a glass panel, so players can see 
the fans from a safe distance. Otherwise, we would have to like you know stand here. And if this was solid, it's just strange to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, you only had to press a lever here. Um. Yeah, I only had to press a lever to deactivate those. Once I made the second map, um, where you also have these fans with one of these. I thought about going back to this and added another um, another laser here. Because we already have the cubes at the bottom here. This this was actually really really cool sense because I had those basically just for looks. Like this conveyor belt. Um, and then I I added the um, the laser thing there and, and then I was like, oh that's really cool, like now I can now I can deliver cubes through here. And I, oh, this connects up so nicely, like I can make it, these cubes just get shredded. And I just really loved having this interconnected space. There's also another, like, little hallway here, so you have a bit of a, like a safe area, and you can look at the fan from down here, which is a cool angle. Yeah, I really love this area, it's so interconnected and, um, like, tight in a way. I think it's cool. Oh yeah, ladders. Yeah, that's also a long story. <laughs> I made an, an, an a source engine add-on that would enable those in Portal 2 with a lot of help. Uh, but now that we've got code, you know, this was just a one-line fix. Yeah, I mean, the, the ladders are pretty much just... I, I They are just like... You know, less bulky stairs. Uh, we didn't have to use them, uh, but Frosty made a cool model here. Um, at, at first, we just used a, a Half Life 2 ladder, which was very like brown and dark, and you could barely see it. So we had to put it against the red background here. Then Frosty remade it, and now it's not a problem anyway, but this is still red to call attention because players didn't know where to go once they fall, fell down here, so the red really calls attention. Yeah. Uh, Belgian guy, there is chapter select in the game. Just click on play and select uh, the chapter. You can also select individual maps. Yeah, also the, 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 mod, the material here was made by Rory. And I had to program code so these would actually move cubes. Because originally, like this is an entity from Half-Life 1 which wasn't made to move V physics objects, it would only move Q physics objects, which are basically Half-Life 1 pushables and a player. So I had to adapt it to uh, work for V physics as well. It isn't perfect, but it worked good, well enough that I, yeah, I was fine with this version. Yeah, that's not an issue. Yeah. Yeah, this, this was where I originally placed it and then I thought it would be cool and uh, an achievement for it. Oh, he's a bit bugged there. Interesting. The conveyor belts are cool. I, I love how one player just said, Oh, that's a really cool use of the conveyor belt textures. <laughs> Thought they were already in the game, I guess. <laughs> yeah, now those are custom. Uh, uh, yeah, also, really, you know, really cool, like the with the red style, like these are very yellow and everything here as well. Huh? Why'd you kill that? Because he's evil. That's something that's actually stuck in for the game for a long time. You, there was a point in like one of the early betas where, um, you would, there was a shredder with turrets being shredded, and you would have the opportunity to throw one in yourself after getting bullied by them a bit. Um, <laughs> so I added it this in here still, as like a sort of, haha, you know, I'm I can kill you. And also to call attention to the portal surface here, because so many players didn't see this. I don't know, it's so interesting because players walk in, look at it, realize it, then come over here, see this, think, oh, I need a portal. Open this, and then they forget that this surface ever exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, very interesting things that you would never like think about yourself until you play test. Um, this, yeah, I think original, this was actually glass here as well. 
and the, and the broken glass was here and this was not broken so players would have to walk back and find this again but players seem to not think about the second room too much once they're here for some reason so i made this part this uh here broken as well um because otherwise players would think that they have to like peek from there you know like outsmart the turrets which wasn't great so i just made it a bit easier do you remember the previous iteration of this portal spawner, Monty? Uh, well, I, I, I really lit this area. But the the weird Stargate know. area, or was that before you? Ah, uh, yeah, that's before you. I do remember that actually. Okay. Yeah, I remember the Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> I call it the Stargate. It's, um, it was an interesting design because again, it's it's, it's it is difficult to justify why there is now. A portal spawner in a behind the scenes area. Um, yeah. So, what I thought is that hey, you know, maybe Aperture uses portals to transport stuff across uh, the facility. So, I basically made this like cargo platform with like a ramp and ha try to make like a like a larger sort of port limiter that's like, ma made for like industrial use or something. Uh, and it, it kind of looked like the Stargate. It never really. I never really decorated that thing. It was always just a concept, and never really liked it. Yeah, no. Speaking of concepts, do you remember that re really old puzzle idea I had with fans? They had like platforms, and you'd have to like I can't remember what it was, but you'd, like you'd they, they would blow up these plat like they'd, they'd push up these platforms, and you'd have to like stand on them. Do you I, remember that? I don't. I sort of remember you did something weird. It never worked. <laughs> it, uh, I think it did. It was. Just, it was just a bit of a work in progress. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's the only puzzle I ever made for Revolution. <laughs> yeah, that was the only thing, only possible thing. <laughs> and then I never did anything ever again because I suck. Is this the first area I did music for? Yeah, this is the first music that I made in this area. Okay. Yeah. You sent it. You sent it in, and I was really impressed. Uh, really got you on the team. I think an earlier version of this area, I just had a cube, and I just walked past the turrets, and they were just shooting at the cube. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You could take a cube with you here because this isn't this fizzle wasn't there, right? Or something like that. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. now you can't bring a cube with you anymore, unless you like, you know, fling one up there. But that's you have to know the map for that. Yeah, also really some subtle things like here here there's glass and the fan make does some nice shadows here. Especially with the volumetrics, it's just oh it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. I always love it when the visual design and the gameplay are combined to enhance each other. Um I mean this might be, this might not be as a strong example, but just like you know, it calls a bit of attention when there's stuff moving around. Same with here and everywhere. Um, the fan is just really cool. I still have all of these. I also added like little triggers to have the turrets like scream, I'm scared, I don't want to die, <laughs> as they fall down. That's a bit of, yeah, I think that's yeah, so very dramatic. So yeah, yeah. Very dramatic. Also little shoots and stuff. Yeah, this is it's one of my favorite areas. Um, oh, thanks, uh, Demon. Yeah, it's great. It, it's, it, it is just one of those where it's very subtle, so a lot of players don't notice that there's any music at all. <laughs> Sadly. Which is also what... No, okay. um, Mike uh, also said this about Portal 2, is that the, because the music feels so diegetic and like it's coming from the environment, they asked players, at, like, they, like, like they asked playtesters at the end, what did you think of the music? And they said, what music? Even though it was like, you know, like 50 tracks in all chambers, so much stuff everywhere. And players just don't realize it's there. And I'm afraid yeah, that it's thing. probably the same here. Because there's, there's also so much nuance that's only really audible in the actual files when you listen to, to, to them yourself. One good example yeah. is in full Portal Gun, right, Monty? I sent, as I, I told you, you gotta listen to this as, like, in, you know, out, oh, just out, file, out, yeah. outside of the game, because it's just so. Uh, it's it's so much better than in game because all, all of the environment sounds just drown out the um, 
all of the micro details in those in, that, in music. It's a shame, really. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. this this collapsing animation. Wow, we pushed that off for a long time. I really never wanted to work on this. Yeah. Originally, we thought about doing much more things, but I I knew at the t at the time even that we we could just couldn't do that, right? Because you know, if we had all budget and you know whatever, we, we, then I would have this stuff like collapse down and destroy the catwalk and get all get stuck in the shredder and you just can't do that uh, on on you know on a small team. So what we yeah, did is this is the blend anima animation here for six sim. Which just blows those two boxes. Um, I think it's still very cool, especially how it breaks the glass. It makes it feel very much like it is affecting you, right? It isn't all yeah, just happening all. out outside there. It's actually mm -hmm. affecting you. Um, if we had, had to, if we would have been able to get the catwalk to break, it would have been nice because it would have it would have like changed up the puzzle a bit. Maybe this would like you know, it would break, but now you could walk down here and you could like get back to a surface that was somewhere else. Make it even more connected, but I'm really happy with how we did this here already. And now, can we, uh, can we get, an, hmm? get? Can we get like a bird's eye view of the whole area? Yeah, yeah in, in in a second. Um, yeah, originally this was just about uh, blowing off the turrets, but once we added this, I, I, I just pretty much by accident, this box landed exactly here to block the path. And I thought, yeah. that's actually kind of cool how it changes the environment, and now you have to portal up here. So we added a portal to the surface. Um, yeah. Some people actually got stuck here a little bit. Some people don't see it, yeah, it's a bit overexposed. Um, I did add that decal there to help like break up the yeah. exposure, but... I mean, uh, yeah, from what I've seen, people don't find that much of it, maybe some. But that's always the case, especially in these behind the scenes areas. That's something we something really, really difficult is conveying to the player where they have to go. Um, cool. Yeah, I, f I think we did a pretty good job for the most part, except there's like one map where that is a bit of a problem for some players. Yeah. Um, when they don't find the elevator in a free intro. Yeah, it's a bit annoying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the birds. I mean, if you look at it just from above, like the whole map, it's a pretty big one. Um, I mean, it isn't big in size, but it's dense in, de in detail, right? It's so much small stuff everywhere. So so many small details on all places. Uh, this took a long time to make and also takes really long to compile. Yeah. Um, I so really, yeah, I'm really proud of this map. At some point, I, I got spawned, uh, like, down here or something. <laughs> and the fog was still blue at the time. And I looked up and I thought, that's such a cool vista. Like, like it, back in the fog, you know, like this facility, you could just see the lights, uh, which, really cool. which inspired A3 pre intro. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, just the composition of the, the slightly slanted things here. I don't know, honestly, know where I got this inspiration from. I forgot it so long ago. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so some playtesters thought that they would die here and stuff, but all of them just jumped on anyways. I think it, people were just like, oh, I'm not sure about that. But yeah, after adding back the big arrow. That was a big arrow, yeah. The, after the big arrow was added and we had these like little tiles, which make it obvious that you have to name it. It's like a jump platform and the light shines down and stuff like that. It all sort of helps yeah. to tell the okay. player this is intended. Also, uh, removing the door at the end of the of the uh, floor there, you know, because at because up there at the end, there was a verge door here, so players thought oh, they could right. go in there. Uh, so I ch changed it out to another thing, and now nope, nobody you know has a problem here. Uh, that's good. Me too make a great team in of itself. 
Yeah, uh, I just wanted to finish talking. That, that, that dialogue was inspired when I replayed Stanley Parable, or like got reminded of it or something. Uh, um, one of our favorite games, yeah. They're like, that just dialogue where the character is actively thinking about things, right? It, it isn't like they thought about something, wrote it down, and it's not presenting it to them. but. But rather, they're, they're thinking as they're talking and like changing the opinion and like, oh, I don't know, oh, well, actually it is, um, yeah. Yeah, this area is also pretty cool. I want to do the much more with, I want to expand on the, on the, cat up, on the tra conveyors with, um, with fans. And I, I designed this as the sort of first puzzle that combines them. I wanted to go further with it. But I never did because chapter like Act One was already so long, and I wanted to move on to the others. That um, yeah, uh, that, that 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 was never done. I also didn't feel like it, it was necessary because I didn't really have any more ideas. Like I felt like those puzzles would have been very complicated. A lot of stuff going over over the place. Um, and then I got the idea for the bombs and thought, you know, let's use the bombs and then have BTS chambers and that's gonna wrap up chapter two, which is a nice good package. Sometimes it's funny how these props interact with each other, like how perfectly this aligns. That's very satisfying. Oh yeah. Everyone picks up this disc for some reason. I, I didn't even realize that somebody took this to the next room and tried to put it into the into CD the, player. Into the CD player. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was very funny. The lamps. The lamps were were uh, aces. Funny thing. Yeah. The lamps everywhere. They were, they were, that went on for quite a while. The, this, tile, um, this tile wasn't here, so I, but I added it because everyone would just always look at it and they were supposed to be a bit more hidden rather than uh, you know in yeah. your face. I think my cone sort of became the next inside joke. After the uh, laps. Yeah, also one of the difficult things with uh, making puzzles in behind the scenes areas is you don't want to clutter too much. Uh, like this air, this room here used to have much more desks and decoration in it, but all of the clutter, you know, it made it look pretty, but it made it really annoying to move around. So it was pretty much just in the end just became like uh, two desks. We had to remove the chairs because people put, could put them in there and um, you know, I didn't want to make them static because I would rather have it consistent. I now understand why, why, why Valve didn't make, made, made most props non-static in Portal 2. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it is always a, a tough balance to with like realism, like you know, real life, design this uh, this office that makes no sense in real life why is this here why is the control here and a button what, what is that um you could do more art to explain some weird stuff like oh this is like the you know this is the ventilation for when they get too hot because they put the lava pit right next to it so this is the lava pit ventilation fan and then here this is the like cube delivery which delivers it to the next test chamber or something. You can expand stuff like that. Um, just gotta you know, think about how much time you want to put into that. Um, but players never really notice too much when areas are catered more towards gameplay rather than realism. I've never seen anyone really complain about it, which is uh, really cool because I was afraid that, uh, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm talking about, about playtesters. Uh, I was afraid that playtesters would be like, oh, this isn't realistic, you know, but no one really does that, I yeah, guess. No. Yeah. And I, and I just wanted this to sort of um, combine both the sort of, of those elements. The one thing I don't like about this puzzle is that it doesn't use portals at all. Uh, it was meant as an introduction and later I would use portals, but then, yeah, I never made that third puzzle because I also wouldn't, didn't know how it would look like and how I would use portals in it. Because these just don't interact with portals at all. 
right? So it would have to be something else. It would have to be, oh, the cube falls through a portal and that gets pushed and something like that. Yeah. Yeah, trash can't block the laser if you find enough, but there is not really anything. You can use the uh, the disc, but it f you know it falls down, so you just have to use that. I added all of those sparks. I saw that in House of Alex, they added like when you use the multi tool, the Alex. <laughs> um, then, and 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 once you completed the thing, the the the, the connections would like spark towards the next like towards towards what 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 it was opening um and i had trouble because players would put it in there and have their face right against it and not notice what happened and then it would walk around like oh, what did this do so we added all of the cables still didn't help i added sounds didn't help but the sparks really did help uh the sparks are timed so when you put it in it like sparks here for like uh, two seconds or something and then it continues so basically to like Hey, there's a sound. Get get the player's attention, and then do the whole loop. Um, there was a yeah, some sort of things how you can get player's attention to what it, this actually affects. Oh, this is still on. I always forget to turn that off. That's something I also like doing in in passes like where you you exit and then there's still a hazard, and you have to turn it off yourself. And then some players forget, and then they get thrown off, uh, which is uh, really funny. <laughs> I didn't do it that much, I think. But here, yeah, I, I, I got to do it. This is a test observation facility. Humans have to sit here all day and watch you test subjects solve the chambers. In real time, too. Imagine. Imagine. Some players have thought that I, that I was... Like, this. that dialogue was a bit more... Annoyed. Still, it sounded very annoyed at the... At watching humans solve the chambers, and some players just thought that that was me or us um, calling out playtesters for being dumb, which wasn't intentional. The intent was that he's a core; he can speed up his, you know, time perception or something, um, or he can't just record it and whatever. And maybe he's getting bored at watching you solve the stuff, like the player. He's getting a bit impatient. Uh, so we toned that down a little bit, so it isn't as... Uh, yeah. Although it is true that, yeah, watching playtests over and over again is um, is a chore. <laughs> and I did eventually just you know, use the skip but like skip forward button, like just pressing right arrow key a lot. Uh, yeah, if you're just watching the same things over and over and over again, for the thousandth time, uh, you you do get bored, of course. But at this area, I I I wanted to have some other uh, sign here, some other wall art, but we never got to make one. So I, I think I think it's still fine. Um, that it's there. You don't need to have something unique everywhere. This is a little funny thing. Um, the little work poster on virtual the virtual reality poster is actually from my workshop map, uh, nuclear meltdown, nu not uh, neurotoxic melt. Neurotoxic disaster, <laughs> not surface meltdown. Neurotoxic disaster, <laughs> um, and then I put the work post on top. This is like the cheapest post I've ever made, but I think it works well as a visual ga gag um, in the background. Uh, the blinds were also made by Rory and animated by Rory, except for the one that goes all the way up, which was the paint to me. <laughs> Did it most? Yeah. Way possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I also later in the project really wanted to expand on the orange BTS style here, on orange offices. So I made this sort of texture here. It was originally made as a wall material, but it was too or like too saturated. It didn't work. Um, so I later used it here, which is just like a nice orange, you know, of orange thing with like uh, some other stuff down here. Yeah, and you can use it for some really nice stuff. It's a pretty cool texture. It's also got a nice little. It is it it is used again in in the spire. The spire also has a color scheme for each control room, no. um, and they sort of like reflect the chapter act colors color schemes. 
Yeah, those fire comments are made by Allison. We use a lot, we use a lot of props that are just available to everyone. We ask, you know, we ask people for for permission. How do players not? I've seen people report that they can't pick up the CD here. And I and I told them, hey, you know, maybe you you should crouch, but you can't pick it up even without crouching. I don't know how interesting. I'm just surprised because, you know, uh, I have never had anyone have issues with that really. It's a weird one. So yeah. ever seeing a uh, image of someone like couldn't even pick up like one on the ground. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. If you're standing on it, then you can't. You have to sort of. Maybe I must just too used to how Soros Jank works sometimes. That I know the nuances of you know when you can and can't pick up something. Because like, if if you're standing on it a little bit, then you can't pick up it, pick it up sometimes and stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you put it in and it inserts the CD. We actually used to have a projected video here that would project like. It would be like the monitor light from this thing in the world. I thought it was really cool, but it didn't make sense and I had issues lining up the animation. Because I was just so excited about projected videos uh, that I got into the engine. So that wasn't really loud at all. But yeah, you put that in there and it's it's not really well choreographed what it does. Um, it, it opens up this door and then in here is... Uh, is uh, a little room from Portal Unity, because um, I followed the maker from the, of, of the lead developer of that mod, Rorius, um, when he m made his developer commentary video on Portal Relo Portal uh, Unity, uh, and he always talked about the design of this chamber, how it's how it's like the one in Portal One, but it's vertical and with glass, and he always talked about it. <laughs> And it became sort of a meme, so I referenced that because uh, he's a he's a he's a he's a cool dude. And I learned a lot uh, from him. Oh, there's some missile line textures. Interesting. These bombs were also added later to sort of foreshadow what's go up, what's going to come. It's better than just to just have a a wall here. Again, this would this this was my phase with uh, glass wall sort of painting, however you call it, decals. Really yeah, cool. the frosted glass, I think. Yeah, it's really cool. This area, people loved the screenshot when I first posted this. It was taken from this air angle. It was actually called Vactube off in offices or something. Where you, this was this would be like before the Vactube stuff. Um, and then I recycled it for this section here. And this like a little projector that's displaying some mysterious slides with some good graphic design on there. <laughs> and they're all censored. Got a very cool blend file for that stuff. <laughs> is that a blend file as well? I've shown it to you, yeah. I have a Oh uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, I wrote cool. I wrote a script that automatically exports all of the slides with the censored oh, and uncensored oh, versions with just pressing oh, a single button. Oh no. Photoshop exists, you know. Or like Google slides itself. <laughs> No. But I guess this works. I guess this works. It's much easier to export those things. Yeah, true. Yeah, but yeah, the, uh, I, 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 like from the screenshot, I just changed it to the orange style and which is just a little office. Uh, this area went through a few redesigns. Yeah, I mean, look, you you can always do this or do, do these sort of things, but you don't realize until you actually make a mod that it's easier to say something like that than it is to do. Um, and also, uh, what you see here, you know, it isn't like someone went into the editor. This is this applies to all games, by the way. I just want to sort of it. It, it seems like there's a lot of uh, most people now understand how these games are made, and one of the things is that what you see isn't all that exists, right? There's a whole lot of history behind everything. It isn't like someone opened the editor 
and placed exactly this floor down, placed these uh, things down, did everything how you did exactly like this first try. This was all like development textures. Then you test that, then you find issues, then you change things and do other stuff, and then you change it over and over and over again. Um, so there's a lot that you never see. Um, I really got a, a newer appreciation for other games uh, having gone through this. Um, because it is, yeah, pl players are often quick to say, oh, you should have just done this and this. But those things aren't obvious or like possible under all circumstances. Yeah, yeah the, the the bomb thing, I really like this chamber. Would have been cool to elaborate on, on, it, on it more, but honestly, I didn't know how to, really. I didn't know what to make it, like how to make it more interesting. Because once you've blown up the, like, this is a very permanent operation, right? You break you break the glass once and it's gone. So it's it isn't like you have to like keep three different things to get in a mind and like combine them in a way. It's not like that. It it is more like where's the next glass to break? I'll just wait for Sterling to finish talking. Yeah. Um, play this is asked that you can turn this off again, and I understand now because it's uh, nice to have some quiet. Yeah, the bomb stuff was designed. Uh, yeah, it is very permanent progress, right? You, it, it isn't like a laser puzzle where you have to keep five things in your head and look and have to combine them. It's it's just oh, where's the next thing? Oh, boom, blow it up, right? Um, so the, the 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 first thing here is to, it, it just teaches you hey. I mean, this this didn't exist. The first glass pane. This is there to tell the player that these are bombs that break glass in a non-lethal way, sort of, right? You because players previously, this was very different. You would you would pre press the button and you could just walk up to the portal, and then it would fall on your head and stuff like that. It did did never kill you, but um, it's still inelegant. So I added a little like uh, handrails here and. Which are also custom props, by the way. Uh, these are edited Portal 2 models. Very nice. Those are like from beta. No one pretty much uses them, but I think they're really, really cool. Uh, yeah, so so, so, so I added the first glass paint just to sh introduce, hey, it breaks the glass and these are the shards. We had performance issues with the shards because they use refract. I've talked about that. Um, yeah, and then first, yeah, you have to you have to it just you just you have to use the portals to redirect them. And then here the puzzle becomes Yeah, you you used to be able to just walk back now. Like this wasn't raised here at all, this was just flat. Uh, so you could just walk back up and then I'll just do this properly. And then you would blow up this. And then players would get stuck here heavily because they would fall down here and break this. And then it would be stuck. And players are still they still have trouble with, with, with this sometimes. But the success rate is much better than before because I added this thing here where you first to get up here. You have to place a portal up there and walk back for the orange portal, right? This is the intro that everyone always thinks is so obvious that the orange portal is also an entrance portal. <laughs> yeah. Everyone thinks it's so obvious, but in this case, the orange portal, the player thinks again, oh, the orange portal is just the entrance for the bombs and the blue portal is where the bombs come out of. They don't think about the fact that they can still travel through the portal while the bombs explode. So I, I I added this here, um, just to reinforce that yeah you have to travel through the portal as the bombs fall. Uh, so then when you got down here, you know, you you would, this would be uh, maybe a bit more obvious to players. I'm really proud of this demon. Yeah, uh, this this is 
um, there's there are a lot of oh god how did that happen? Must have moved the map with our texture log because that happens sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, there are a lot of these micro decisions that that, that you don't notice in the end, but um, they they really did adapt. A lot of playtesting, you know, went into this. A lot of it, iteration. This is a little funny thing. This is a very much reminiscent of the this of destroying Wheatley's uh, screens. Yeah. Sorry, you start to be much more frustrated at the player for destroying everything. Remember that, Mon Rob Monty? Yeah, I've got a lot of complaints about that one. Yeah, players just found him to be so annoying to be around. Um, uh, like, fr like frustrated to be around, right? He, like, he was unlikable on all accounts. He was just an asshole to you. Um, some players still don't like the voice, and, you know, that's each to their own. But I think people find him more likable now, and it's a tough balance because we we wanted Sterling to not be completely nice to you from the beginning, because then he would be a very unexpected twist villain. So what we tried was to sort of have him a, a bit nicer, and now you're a janitor, and, and he's your boss, but he's just very deceptive, right? He lied about the... like, he forced you to volunteer, then he lied to you about it about the human emergency response team. And he basically forced you to become a giant without telling you what it would be. Uh, now he wants you to help him on this weird thing he doesn't really share too much about. So I wanted to keep him a bit like untrustworthy. Uh, yeah, also the co-op thing was, yeah, I, I've, it came about, I thought about um, with puzzles like these that you solve in alternate ways, um, like broken chambers and stuff like that, uh, a lot of players often really, it's really important to them that the test chamber makes sense on its own, right? Uh, like you can design a puzzle to work with the broken mechanic, like with the bombs here, but that this isn't a test chamber, this is just like a side effect. You can, yeah, you can do this, but this should be an actual puzzle, right? Um, so I, I, I thought about co-op because I didn't want this puzzle to have like destroyed elements. I wanted all, all elements to work. So I thought about co-op. Uh, a co-op puzzle can't be solved in single player. So, so that would be a nice way to sort of break through, right? You, you are breaking the co-op puzzle and making it possible to solve. You still have to use a different exit. Um, but yeah, players really like that. And I think it's really cool. It also was easy to add, right? I mean, that's, that is so cheap to add. You just add two droppers, those two uh, overlays. And that texture and it suddenly is a co-op chamber. <laughs> so yeah, that was really easy to add and people really, really liked it. So let's do this properly. Portal over there. So still we still, still difficult still... chamber. Just like backtrack of quite a bit. Yeah, you have to go back and forth a bit. I tried to remove the distance, like to condense the distance down as much as I could. I would still like if it was a bit closer together, but I don't think it's, po it's as problematic as it was before because previously this dropper was like over here in the corner and yeah, yeah. it was very different. Now it's a bit close and all. And since I ha added that thing, players think more about going back and forth. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the current implementation. Yeah, this I, I I had. Um, I was afraid that because players struggle with this in, in Portal Two, in Portal One, I mean, where they don't realize that they can use the rocket turret to destroy, this, uh, like the back tube in the behind the scenes areas. Um, I try to make it as obvious as possible. I use all of the tricks. First of all, sign here that when you stand down there. You, you, you can see that and see that there's where you can get a cube for this, okay? I must say, okay, that's, that's dumb. Then also, um, very obvious surface on the floor for the I portal. I think I solved this weird. Did you use the cube? What did you do? I, I was standing, go back to like off the platform. I was standing off the platform and I just jumped a you couple times. You can shoot that, yeah. 
I jumped a couple yeah. times and hit the fucking my bad. Hit the uh that thing there. Yeah. You you can't get the shot. I tried to move it down, but I guess you can still do it. Oh goodness. Yeah you can actually oh wow. So that's how people get soft looking there. Interesting. We should fix that. Never happened in playtesting, I guess. Oh my god. That didn't happen to me though. As soon as it fell through, I was like, okay, it's gonna get shot again. I gotta move the portal now. <laughs> but yeah, I I I I tried everything to do to get this um to be obvious. Like also 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 the light here helps because it calls attention to itself. It it's it has got the the shadows of the cube traveling. Mm. Um, so all of the tools to get players to notice this thing. Now this chamber doesn't make sense, like why is there a second thing here all in glass with a uh, observation room in there? It does make sense, but players never think about it too much. Um, and I put it on there, and now, again, because it's co-op, you can't progress, I thought that was really elegant. Uh, and yeah, so basically the puzzle here is, uh, this, this is like one of the you know, only like thinking puzzles that is in this thing, except for like, you know, actually thinking of portals is, oh, okay, I'm here. I need to break this glass because I need to portal from here to there. How do I get to break this glass? Because this is back here, right? So once you're back there, now you can break both of those panels, break this open. Um, but some players, uh, they, they, they don't break this here and then they go back and I still need to break that last one. I thought it was also cool that there was another, like, it just added another last layer of, uh, like, thing that you have to do to solve the puzzle. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to expand on it more. I thought about it, but I also couldn't think of anything. The bombs aren't the most versatile. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very permanent, as I said, yeah. It's... I managed to do one nice puzzle and I'm, and I'm happy with that. I, I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to do even one. Uh, I fish for the teleport phase. Yeah, it is because the portal gun is screwed up. It's, it, it's a broken portal gun um, that you pick up. Yeah, demon. I I try to combine both both together, um, and sometimes I, yeah, in some cases one is at the expense of the other, a bit too much than I would like. Um, but uh, I think I think it's I think it works pretty well in, in most areas. Um, the the co-op thing here was just a really nice thing. Also, yeah, this is this was originally white surface and players try to use the bombs to break the button to open the door <laughs> uh, so I made it so you can't put bombs on that thing um, which I don't like the look of this and like the it's it's nice to ha be able to place a portal there to walk through but that is something a lot of people did uh, so yeah this level received a lot of micro optimizations the emergency door don't block. Don't don't block. It's also a fun wording, right? Emergency door. It's not an emergency exit. It's an emergency door. If there's an emergency, take this door with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, this room that we get transitioned from. Oh god, yeah. You need to spawn in this room. You used to like spawn below it. And then this would be like where you spawn the key. Yeah. It's like really unintuitive. But also, it's another teleport. This is completely blocked off uh, with oh, yeah. the with the off lighting here. And as soon as you and the blinds are down and everything, and as soon as you press the button, you get teleported over to the other area with the new lighting. The blinds go up. Sterling talks. It's a really cool transition. So now we're just yeah. over here. Yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty cool. There's the white one. Yeah, players. This people know this one from the gameplay demos as well. Um. <laughs> oh damn it! <laughs> I couldn't mute myself in time now. 
Oh, we get an F in chat. F in chat for my sneeze, yeah. I was really cold out. Um Yeah, so uh in, in, in the in the other in the, the gamer demos you see that the players come come out comes out from here. Um and the and this button would trigger the cube dropper. And we had a bunch of problems with that. Not so much with this. This 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 was fine. Oh, who joined? It's me. Hi, yes. We are we're live. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We're live streaming. So, so that I, 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 okay. I, I, I just I maybe didn't notice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it this wasn't a problem. The area looked awful. Like the gloom you would come out from. That looked terrible. But gameplay wise, this wasn't a problem. What was a problem was this up here because players, um, yeah, it's it it feels weird that a button that's in this observation room up here triggers something in there because players just for ignore this as a part of the test. Um, that was very problematic in playtesting. Um, yeah. Uh, I find it's the it's still cool to have like a drop button that is activated by like a development button debug thing, you know. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool idea, but it's just it's a it's a cool idea, but we yeah it was changed. Uh, so I we moved the button up there, and then I thought, well, what's this observation room good for now? You know, like is it just to explore? Because I don't like that idea. Um. So so uh, no, actually, before I moved it there, I. I tried, yeah, before I did that, I had this door open so you would enter from here instead. Because uh, I thought, hey, you know, maybe if I get the player's attention to use this button first, then they remember it later. So I had this door closed, where you would have to press the button, and then it would drop a cube, and then also open the doors. And the doors would stay permanently open, and the cubes would now drop every time you do this. And But it's, I thought, ah, that that isn't elegant at all. Like it, it does two things. It seems so arbitrary. Um, no. So I changed it from okay. Let's have this there. It's fine. This is better. It's an, it's a visual connection and uh, and all. It's less effort than trying to make like a wire that connects with these like blue and orange skins and whatever. Um, so then it, it was changed. This button just activates the light and turns on like moves the blinds up and all of that. And I think the like the final version is definitely um, the best for gameplay, and it's also got a cool new visual effect with the lights turning on and stuff, you know. Yeah. At this on. chamber, I think I, I was this was already done when you joined, right, Monty? Yeah, it was basically. How was it for you, Ace? How I, I always forget what the timeline is. When you joined, was it already done? Uh I was already done. So the beginning of the, um, I think this chamber, this chamber wasn't done when I joined. It was I. Uh, I remember you built it in a puzzle maker. Yeah, um, yeah. I I had a puzzle maker concept for this, right? Yeah. One of the very few the puzzle maker version. I think I, mean, I think the puzzle maker version still exists actually. Um, yeah, I still have and it. Then I, <laughs> yeah. And then I, uh, yeah, and then I watched it, it slowly evolve from uh, its hammer block out to what we have now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I honestly don't remember building this, uh, like decorating this room. This is kind of insane. I don't know how I managed to I don't remember do. you decorating it either, but I remember the block out version of this exact map. This is a really insane map that I always forget uh, how, you know, some, like, some things you re like some things in development you just remember so vividly. But others, they just you just forget about them. They just like like it's never happened. And this is a really really cool area. I really love this one. I one thing that I try to do is I always try to do this right is to have a lot of different la layers of parallax for vistas. So for this, you've got the the far away stuff, of course. Then you've got some sort of medium distance like the foreground here. And they're like like the back tubes here and the catwalks, which sort of move. They're like between the background and you, and then you've got the the, the tube in here, 
that is right in the middle. And it, it, it sort of cuts into the chamber in a really awkward way, but it gives the whole thing so much character. Like it's definitely eye-catching and all. And when you move around, this it just gives you the sense of scale because of how the parallax shifts so much. Um, if this wasn't there, I feel like the scale wouldn't come across too well. Yeah. And then also on the bottom, it took a long time to decorate this thing and also a lot of effort to optimize this because <laughs> Yeah, if you open this map with hammer, be ready, to, be ready to get assaulted with the amount of tool triggers absolutely everywhere. Yeah, the amount of of hints here. Now I can act. Dude, it's so relieving to actually be able to just show everything. You know that. This <laughs> is <laughs> just like oh, just casually open the map in hammer and it's like. I've been after that for years. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing just... that yesterday. I was just streaming me fixing bugs, and it was like, oh, I can finally show people what I've been doing. <laughs> Yeah, this is how these maps look like in Hammer. Um, they look like absolute vomit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this, it just always Oops. looks so overwhelming and complicated. It's not um, that bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just a lot of stimulus, right? Because you expect it to look like in game, and then there's just so much shit everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just quickly hide these um, skips and hints. There we go, it's already much better, right? These are all parallax bounds, they are set up for the cube maps. Um, yeah, took a long time to go. And this has pretty much not changed since I made it, because I, this is one of those chambers that I like really just like sat down and just churned the map out in like a week or two for, to, for the gameplay demo. That was a really good way to get myself like, to keep working on the game. If any you know other mod developers are watching this, which I'm guessing they are, um, one thing to get yourself to sort of ship, you know, to sort of finish things or keep motivated is to set yourself a deadline to ship something and release it. Like to finish it completely. Even if it's just a video of the map, it will it, like you will learn so much about the whole process to get something like showcase ready, right? Yeah, and, and don't cheat by pushing it forward. You know, that's the one yeah. you can do. And 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 if you and if you um, what was I going to say? Yeah, if you set us, if you set, set 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 yourself a deadline that is tough, but you know you can do it if you if you just. Uh, you know, put in enough consistent work, um, even still with breaks and all, uh, then that keeps you um, keeps you working on this stuff. And uh, I definitely learned that f with the gameplay demos. That was really helped me to just nail down the style of one of these areas because this was this existed well before the previous map was ever started. This this existed way earlier. Um, oh yeah, the entrance used to be completely, de completely different. Yeah, it's I it. it, it see the old entrance in the gameplay video. Uh, we we talked about that one before. How this has all changed. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, with with the overgrown showcase and everything, like those really helped to um, get myself to keep work and finish that thing. Yeah, this it's good that this is now here. It's the fun little particles and sparks. Those sparks were to call attention when you press the button. Who joined? Yeah. Hi, Frosty. Hello. How's it going? We're streaming. I hope you know. Oh, nice. It's interesting how our concurrent viewers is really consistent. <laughs> yeah. We've had a hundred viewers for a long time now. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's quite the influx. Yeah. I think we reached about 150 and then did back, did back down. There's a guy in chat who is surprised that this took two weeks to make. How how oh. guys how how would you guys comp like say, you know how good is two weeks of a time for an area for a map like this? Is is that fast? Is that slow? I well I think it kind of depends on like the map scale. For I'd most mappers, that's, that's pretty. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty fast. It's pretty fast. So all of that, I'd say that's pretty fast. I can, I'd, I'd say take maybe like. 
maybe a, like maybe four weeks, maybe a month or something to get all the details in. It also yeah, depends on, 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 on how consistently you work on it, but if you really like yeah. work on it like almost every day, like you know, for two hours after school or something. Definitely, yeah. 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 Because players players they don't realize that every single thing here has been placed by someone manually. Yeah. Um, There's no fucking tools for any of this. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's hard to realize that. But you see, it took someone hours and like days and weeks to, to do manually. Like, there's no automation here. Yeah. No, it's not in Real Awakens, like, make a spline that will make the vacuum for you or, you know, <laughs> yeah. automatic, well, like, texture is. based, you know, yeah, automatic, yeah, like, occlusion yeah, based yeah, dirt yeah. grime or anything. Yeah, spend, spend, mega, spend made a tool for that, uh, but we don't yeah, it use it work. because it didn't work <laughs> for us. Oh, no, <laughs> also, I personally so. just didn't like the look of it because I, I, I really like the modular look of these, like, pre-assembled pieces right and, and they just stick them together if it's very modular whereas those splines feel like they're they're like cast molded perfectly for this situation which felt a bit uh weird it didn't feel like it was manufactured and realistic so i still prefer to place them manually also it just didn't work yeah uh, probably our, our, our weird setup is just yeah there's a lot of jank going on with that but yeah, a lot of players they think that oh you, you just select an area and say floor, but now nah, everyone like you place this down and then this and then this and then you make another thing and add this and add this and rotate. So you and gotta make sure you make them fun details. Even, so even all the way yeah. down to the like, even all the way down to the smallest like stains on the floor is placed by an individual mapper. Yeah, it's a little bunch of, and then the lighting thing. It's out lighting because you can't preview your lighting. You have to wait for oh, like yeah. half an hour. Yeah, to see your <laughs> you changes. You, the lighting you have to compile it for like twenty minutes or some places. So if you yeah, don't have if a you, fast CPU, you're often waiting for like yeah, if you aren't rich, minutes just to see how the lighting goes. That's why, that's why it's good to do lighting first, or like while well, as you go. Because yeah, doing it last, yeah. it's just too yeah, yeah. Not if you, feasible. That is very true. If you if you manage to get to, get the lighting look interesting and good before you add all of the thousands of props it it is not really good because lighting is, is very important for the looks of stuff and it gives you an idea and you can make it is easier to make a a well lit like if, if your area is already well lit then you can't really mess it up uh with props but if you have a well like you know and if, if i have a map with a lot of props that looks bad because of the off of the lighting, then no amount of props will be able to fix that. It's a very convoluted way of saying that thing. Yeah, you, every little. I feel like I, it's it's worth to point that out because I think we've got a lot of non models watching. Um, yeah, yeah. We may find this stuff interesting. How this. Uh... It's a blue square. Yeah, the blue square is basically uh, a like a representation of the entity, the overlay entity. Uh, so you just place that, and then you can move it around. Um, can we get a shout out to that blue square in chat? <laughs> blue, sh blue square shadow. How did it start? Um, I started game development by working on portal mods maps. Yeah. So. This like this project. The reason it took eight years, you know, if you were already experienced, you could maybe make something like this in 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 less time. Um, but I learned everything as I went and learned all of the aspects along the way and just kept retreading and improving and improving and improving throwing away old but making new um and i mean for the others it's the exact same none of us have, have a game dev background we all just learned as we went and just the joy of the craft and joy for portal 2 kept us going yeah it seems like you often will have to push through lack of motivation to get something done um but then, like, eventually you'll find that, that motivation again, and then you just continue with it. Yeah, motivation is often brought up by uh, by people for, like, oh, I don't have motivation to work on this mod or on this map or whatever. And, yeah, I, before I go into that, uh, Ace, do you remember where that map was, where this model was missing, apparently? Uh, which map? For, oh, for the pipes? Yeah, there was a map it was, with this. Yeah, it was in this map. It was right there in that corner. I already fixed and pushed it. Interesting. Okay, then I already one, have yeah. the new version, I guess. Yeah, I I fixed that like last night, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it was only an error model or something. It's just a just a missing model. Don't know what happened. Interesting. Interesting. It it is possible because we had another version of the 
of this that had a, had a different name. And that could have been made around the same time, so maybe we used this other one here, and then maybe, we removed yeah. that, and then it was never replaced. That's very possible. Yeah, also custom, this is, this custom mode was so useful. Um, special text for did they, did they took, I mean, you make the textures with the rest, right? It isn't like you first make all of the maps and then you make all of the textures. It's, you make a map, uh, usually it starts with the map because that's where the gameplay is, right? Um, in, the, in the level editor. And then you see, oh, okay, uh, what's the custom texture? Yeah, we don't like how our white walls look. Let's remake them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you update all of your maps to use the new stuff and, you know, all of that. Uh, and it automatically gets applied and you have to worry about going through them. I mean, in this, name, uh, in this case, it, 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 it just overwrote the existing ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, which means that players, if they, if they import port 2 maps, their maps will not look different. Yeah. But that's fine because we're not P2C, you know, this is our, a, our thing. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's, it's its own game, it's not a modding base. So we weren't restricted by all, any of that stuff. If the exit was changed, remember how the exit looked before? Oh god, yeah, it was not very good. Can't yeah, Ace right. and I, we, we, we changed it up so many times until we finally just ended up with this. Because originally this was like a weird BTS section. I had to like oh, yeah. fly through a wall, a hole in the wall here, but players just didn't know where that led, and it was really weird. So, uh, we it's uh, the exit changed so many times before we landed on this one. Yeah, we just eventually, I just, I just eventually, like, I always wanted to be a BTS area for some reason, but then I just gave up and said, yeah, okay, let's just make it and test him. I think it's so much better. It was definitely yeah. the, right, the right way. Sometimes you're just so preoccupied with an idea that that you have, that you uh, you have like blinders on and you don't want to give it up because you think it's so cool or whatever. Um, but you just gotta sometimes let go of those um, preoccupations. One thing I, I really like about this, or something that could have been a disaster rather, are look at these ant lines. There's a lot of stuff here. This area is very dense. It's got a button, a dropper, an ant line going through here. It's got a light bridge and a button. A lot of stuff going on, but none of the ant lines cross, and that, uh, yeah, was really nice because once they cross, it it is you can't see anything. <laughs> yeah. But this was, uh, no one was confused here. It, it it is all just straight line here, straight line here, straight line here, straight line here. So very easy to follow this stuff. This is something that could be very um, complicated and convoluted. Yeah, definitely. This hole was funny. <laughs> this was always here. Uh, oh, yeah, we added that because people found it a bit too difficult. Yeah, we were uh, we were scared about the mod's difficulty. Um, now players, some, now some players call it too, too easy. Uh, but with this chamber, this was such a spike in difficulty that uh, I added this as a way to add an alternative solution. Right, so we didn't really make the only solution easier. What we did is we just added another one, so players are more likely to find one of them. So you so you can, uh, once you're here, you can place a portal back here, jump through, and get the cube that way. Uh, yeah, yeah it was to... Yeah, it was to get the cube back. That was that was it was much later. But yeah, this is one of the ways where you could get the cube back here, um, or you can respawn it from the button there. That's what I tend to do. Yeah, I always use that one. But I added this as an alternative one. I had to add this wall because, of course, someone stood down here and shot through the thing. <laughs> Things you only find in playtesting. Yeah. So I had to add that little trim here. So yeah, you can't get it. Okay. What made you begin making? It was, I mean, I was inspired by Mel. I saw Mel and I thought, wow, community modders made this? Like, whole game? <laughs> and I thought, I can do that. <laughs> 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 it's 
so here we Simple, are. Simple, easy. It'll take me like 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, how hard can making a mod really be? How hard uh, can it be? Later. You always think that it's a six month project and, and until you actually start it, like that one guy in the comments. Yeah, it comes eight years. Yeah. I mean, eight years, it, it is very non linear, right? Like, def in 2016, I didn't work on this every day full time. Yeah, true, true. Working very rarely. But I still learned a lot of, a lot of stuff along the way. Definitely. And the things you learn here, you can um, take with you to. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 learned I learned so much about level design work in this. I think I just. What did I do? I I, I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, this, 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 this puzzle is very complicated. If I don't pay attention, I also mess it up. Yeah, because now you have to respawn this one, exactly. Yeah. There was one time out of all the time that I played this map, I think like a couple days prior to release, where I played this one, I wasn't thinking, and completely forgot how to solve it. Yeah, literally. Yep. 20 seconds. Yep. One of... Something I really like about this chamber, all of my chambers have some core idea, whether it's visual or uh, gameplay. And this is a very circuit body type of puzzle, where you just move things around all, all of the time. Um, but one of the unique things about this is, again, is this world, this uh, portal spawner, where at first you use... By the way, I just completed it, so I am, you know... I'm gonna cheat around now. At first, you would, yeah. At first, you would use this portal on the orange stage to shoot a laser in like that. So, so here, this is on, and it and it becomes the output for the laser, and it has to enter the the blue portal here. It could also enter the blue portal on here, but this is how you do it, um, and then later. You turn this off, and now you have to redirect it into here, and now place the portal yourself. So you're using the same surface, once as a mono portal and once as a manual, you know, blue portal. And I think that's I I, I wanted to have that in a puzzle somewhere, and I'm glad that I still got to stick it in, even at the very end. I'm glad it's at the end because this is something really obscure. Um, mm. Yeah, I I, I I quite like this puzzle. It's one of the more sort of circuit body um, and one where a lot of players get stuck. Uh, but I think it's pretty cool. You just really have to think. It's it it, it is a tough nut to crack. I think it rounds off uh, Act One pretty nicely. Yeah, it's a perfect and it's a perfect way to end Act One. Um, this this didn't have really have a good place in the mod. Oh, it's still not not, not there here. Nice. This 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 didn't have a good place in the mod for a long time because we made the the, the test chambers for, for for chapter one, and then and then I, and then and then I made this, but we didn't really have a better speed section because that was being reworked. Um, so that was in the making, right? And then I didn't know where to put this. Should this be put? Like, should this transition from the test chambers to the behind the scenes? Or should it be at the end of behind the scenes? At first, I thought it should be at the start of behind the scenes, right? Like, you're transitioning from test chamber to behind the scenes. Uh, but I also wanted to have the the surprise catapult and stalling, like, you know, tell you things. Um, so then I put it at, at the very end here. Makes sense. Best chamber, in your opinion? Yeah, I can, I can see that it's a very tough. It's, it's it, I think it's the hardest one in a, in a mod. Um, players have noted, and I also the, uh, see that the power, hmm? second power chambers. The power power one in the mod. That's hard because second, players the, the second power chamber in, uh, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, in yeah, A yeah. to end. Yeah, that one is hard. Um, because play because I think. I don't know if it's a fault of the puzzle or if it's just because players don't connect the dots. Uh, some of them don't connect the dots too quickly, right? Um, right. 
I I don't know how I could design that to make it more obvious that the that that you have to put the cube on the deactivated panel. I feel oh. like what could maybe help a bit is if you could see the catapult from the button from the lever that you that you toggle and if the button if the lever was in a, in a maybe a more it is in a central position um i don't know why so many people even i i watched someone stream today and he and he 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 always said oh yeah the lever turns off the of the catapult but that doesn't help me right like they don't think ahead they don't for some reason some players don't think that this lever which is in this chamber that does things is part of the puzzle and that's something I don't really understand right now. Why, like, what you could change in the design to make it more obvious? Because it was obvious in the first chamber that you have to use, but in the second chamber, some players just dismiss it. And I have, no, I don't know why that is, honestly. That's a really interesting design uh, problem right there. Yeah, I think it might just boil down to players it being a generally a new mechanic that players aren't used to yet. It's possible, yeah. And that chamber was very different for a long time. It had weird platforms and everything. Yeah, it was very weird. Yeah. So the new one is uh, much, much better. The, the, the final version, I'm really happy. It's also very few elements. Um, let's just finish this. I think I'll end the stream after this one. It's a good place to end because we've already streamed for a long time. The players think that this, is, this should be portable, but they send me bug reports. It's fun. <laughs> I swear, there used to be a yeah, big so sign here somewhere. that said exit this way. I wanted I to add one, but then Mandela, I like... <laughs> I swear there was, and then it disappeared. Surprise. That's so okay, sad, there's like cut content. This elevator is like a little bit higher, and like one more story tall, and uh, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, uh, this, uh, this text is fun. This isn't an overlay. This is just a different texture. Monty is very unpleased about that. <laughs> yeah, it should have been. It, it could have been just a decal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, c <laughs> I could have. Um, it would so much easier. I don't know how you aligned this, but. <laughs> It's been a pain to get aligned properly. Please show me. Because I just like. No. <laughs> yeah, this app is also. It took a long time to decorate this one. Um, yeah, we were yeah, still decorating it until okay. like. Quite, quite pretty much to the end. Yeah, so this thing is like its own texture. That's like the carpet. Like this is the carpet, and this is the carpet but double the size. And then I like perfectly aligned this thing on with the rest. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so unnecessary. You just take the original carpet and just add like. I wanted white. to to have my own control over how this blends. Um, that's why I, I did guess. that. I guess. Because right. with over with all this, it always blends the same way, right? Right. Fair. Fair. Yeah, I try to make this it's look a little bit dilapidated and like it's because you're sort of approaching the overgrown. So you've got all of the like a bit more shit on the ground here. Stuff seeping down. Dark lights. Look, I know what you're thinking. You really don't trust me. And I've got nothing And as you go up you it's it's becoming more and more destroyed. Like here it's still very you know, act you know, like non destroyed. And this is like a weird dark area, and this is. Oh yeah, this actually used to have roots hanging down from here, and you would then see yeah. see overgrown outside from the elevator. Yeah, I was, that was really cool. It was cool, but I wanted to sort of save the reveal for later, um, okay. and also it was it it didn't work because how do you make this right? You, the sun would have to come from the side, but we didn't want to make a sunrise or sunset. So then the lighting just doesn't work. So we just made it that this is just dialogue, so we can focus on dialogue actually. And then the cool reveal happens later where we can put all of our energy on that one vista and it's a nice payoff. And, and you can see the spire there. The surface, I think we, we made the right choice.
Look at the bright side. There's fresh air, it's sunny outside, and I think there's a cool breeze. It's become a bit more like rusty, and this was was made by Ace. With any luck, this should take uh, just a few minutes. Next bet is, is me. Wasn't it also you? This was also. This one. I, th I think you're delayed in the stream. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. The stream's very delayed for me. Yeah. So I made the one with the um, sort of tilted, uh, room mover, and then the broken office. Yeah. The whole way thing. I see. Yeah. Actually, for me, I keep trying to make it not be delayed. They're always delayed. Oh, you can't. be like an hour behind. You can't make them not delayed. Alright, well, I think it's a good place to leave the stream, I also need to go to bed. Uh, yeah, I've got stuff to do tomorrow. Develop a stream part 2 win. <laughs> yeah, we could... We could do... I don't know when we can do next one. I keep getting... DMs, okay. Well, I hope it's been... informative for some people. Indeed, indeed. Uh, somebody, somebody asked for a for a panorama code review. Look at it. Uh, I mean, this is all you know. Open, you can all see this in the game. Yeah. Um, my awful JavaScript code. It's, it isn't too bad. I think I use. Um, JavaScript is just a bit archaic sometimes. But that's 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 what we're used to. I missed the stream entirely. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that is, you will be able to rewatch this. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just reading chat. Well, then. Um... Yeah, I got a. Do something tomorrow, so I'm going to pop off. I'll see you guys next time, I guess. Yeah, thanks for joining. See you all. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye. Bye.